Hello everyone, McCall here, and thank you all for joining us for the next episode of Star Trek Adventures Cerberus Station. Uh, this will be the second season in Season 2, and we are going to start go right into this with a Captain's Log. Alrighty, Captain's Log, start at 82977.0. It's been five days since the entire station had front row seats to the simulated battle between the Nighthawk and the newest rival to the Lasai Expanse, the Dark Royal. Though it ended rather poorly for the Nighthawk, they took their lumps with their heads held high before leaving for Scorpy space. And by that I mean I have a very angry captain who likes to dither on subspace. Either way, I wish him the best. Uh, what's really important, though, is it seems that Cerberus Station has a cursed position. Uh, to date, every single officer to hold the title of Chief of Security has found some way to compromise themselves. Uh, in particular, our newest, Demos, has reported that there is an AI in his head that came from the station we had to destroy a week ago. This AI, while disdainful of, of organics, hasn't done anything so far to threaten the station, but is still a security risk. Demos has relieved himself of duty until the situation is stabilized. I've had additional guards posted on him at all times, specifically with non-energy weapons, in case the worst should happen. My time in the Gamma Quadrant taught me that you can never be too careful. Uh, the way I see it, we've got three options here. The first, and probably the least preferable, is that I order Demos to undergo a procedure to eradicate this AI. The second option is we find a way to transfer the AI to an isolated module, a la a certain Moriarty program on the Enterprise D. And the third option is we leave the AI to live in Demos's head. Now, obviously, the pencil pencilers back on Earth would want the third option, but this would essentially mean the death of Demos's Starfleet career. He would never again be trusted in any command or security capability. Thus, I've asked Dr. Aria and Lieutenant Commander Keevan to pursue option two, the isolated module plan. They are to receive any resources they require for this. However, should this not pan out and Demos be unwilling to resign his commission, I will, as the instructors at the Academy like to put it, pull a Janeway and engage option one myself. There's far too much going on out here in, on the frontier to have a chief of security with baggage and unknowns. And log. All right. So on that note, we are going to start in the shuttle bay, where uh, in his spare time, Demos has been going over his most recent acquisition, which happens to be uh, which ah. Let's get my myself to the right thing. Apparently, I can't GM tonight. Okay, which happens to be his very own personal ship, the U.S. or the SS Apollo, a retired. Um, and now it's just slipping from me. What class of ship is this again? Uh, an Airy class, A.K.A. the SS Raven. Uh, these have been sold off on mass by Starfleet, as in as is condition, which basically means hull's been dinged up and the interior's been stripped right to the bulkheads. So that has been Demos's project while he has been well, on self-imposed exile while everyone figures out what the heck they're going to do with that voice inside his head. Demos, feel free to start the, sh start the show and then we'll go from there. Uh, could I have... Uh, do I have Dolan with me? Uh, does Dolan want to be there? Sure. And can I also have Keevan? I suppose Keevan can show up, sure. Roger that. There we go. Demos is just looking over a pad, punching a bunch of things, and um, he's looking at his little personal entourage, and he's like, you know I'm never not armed, right? I'm just messing with you. Anyways, uh, Commander, Lieutenant Commander, uh, meet my, oh man, meet my ship, the Apollo. Noble name. Not uh, too bad. I've seen a few in my time here and there. Well, she's a lemon. <laughs> uh, she's space-worthy, you know. She was transferred with a minimal crew. I think we got some new support personnel from her. Uh, but she's been gutted. 
hardcore. The warp core is barely functional, and everything I'm reading on the ship's manifest is her computer systems were pretty much stripped. And, uh, yeah. The, uh, fun project I invited you both to come down was, uh, to see this. Uh, I want to strip her completely down to the frame. And redo everything. A little bit differently, though. The, uh, area class is built to be a flying brick. Not to be pretty, but I mean to be strong. This thing could crash into a planet and still survive. Everyone on inside's dead, but the frame will still exist. They reinforced it to such a point that it's not viable to cram it with any more things. Like, it's either a science vessel, or a cargo vessel, or a tactical escort. That's it. They can't have multitudes. What I want to do put two warp cores inside this thing, reinforce the structure integrity, integrity generators, and make this thing a screaming bat out of hell. It's a um, hot rod. I... You want to help? I'm always I... up for a good challenge. Hey. I can certainly assist. Excellent. So the idea between the two warp cores is to give this thing maximum power at all times. There's no drop, there's no divot, there's no variation. It is constant flow. So, gonna need a complete hull redesign. But the good thing about having this ship here is whatever I take out, we recycle it into the uh, you know, station's re uh, replicators. That matter is being repurposed, and we're not taken away from the station, so I shouldn't catch too much flack from the captain for doing this. As a G GM intercession, the station now has an onboard refinery. Uh, with a small fleet of ships that are uh, tearing apart Janus 1 and Janus 2 for raw resources. So that's not a problem. Excellent. So, my main goal is to do this while we work on whatever's happening in here. And he'll just tap his head. He'll just go, you still there? Why, yes. It's impossible for me to leave. Okay. Yep, still here. How is that going, the voice inside of your head? Oh, it's peachy. It's um, non-stop questions when I'm trying to sleep, and it's uh, complete and utter... Uh... Actually, no, it hasn't been that bad. It's been reciting its whole entire Imperium at me, though. Why, well, yes. So. Yes, you had tuned out when I had gotten to the 703rd reigning Emperor of all eternity, Lord Dracos you... the 94th. I think I tune up, but Edenic memory I can't, so... Oh. So shall I keep talking, then? <laughs> sure, just a little whisper. <laughs> Very well. Demos, that sounds like some of the Betazoid um, poets that I used to know. Just keep rambling on, and they won't even... Yep. <laughs> yeah. So. Yeah. Uh, on that note, uh, coming through the upper bay is... Commander Area, who might have a couple new ideas for decision for the AI. I uh, I walk in, I sort of wave at uh, Lieutenant Commander Keevan and motion for him to come over, just out of earshot of Demos. Yes, Commander. What can I do for you? I have been working on our project. And I wanted to get your thoughts on this. And she hands you a pad. And on that pad is uh, something that O'Brien did on Deep Space Nine. Uh, if you rem don't remember the episode, uh, what he did was there was a rogue AI that was messing with all the systems. Mm -hmm. And he built like a literal program doghouse for it. Uh, and coaxed in. But yeah, it was like a puppy thing. Um. But he coaxed the program into this doghouse, and then basically it was in its isolated module, and it wasn't a problem anymore. And that's sort of what the pad details. Ah, the rover scenario. I remember reading up on this. I had some 
over interest in the enterprise at one point more specifically in o'brien and Jordy and i mean sorry cat you know mr lafour well lieutenant commander do you think we could do this or do you think it would work uh you have probably had more i hesitate to say hands-on or direct experience with the ai but uh, what are your thoughts? I mean, you you had this is purely an engineering solution at this point. I I don't know enough to do a medical solution at this point. Well, I don't think it's just going to be that. We have to look at it from this way: certain in artificial intelligences, in my experiences, are just as much biological and uh, electronic than they are engineering. This thing's going to think with its own mind, maybe not necessarily like a human or denobulin or anyone else however it's going to possibly still have a set of rules it might want to f go by we may have to get some scientific help but i mean coaxing it with an ai might be a little more difficult than the rover scenario well i mean if this was anyone else if this was a species i understood and could actually do research on uh, I could easily induce a coma that would more or less push the AI to go somewhere else because it can't really do anything with a coma patient. But I can't do that here. Demos is an unknown. I barely know enough to fix him if he has any injuries as it is. Um, I, Without him literally giving us everything he knows about his own species, which to my knowledge he hasn't yet, uh, without that, we can't really begin to approach this from a medical perspective. I'm just saying we may have to lean on it slightly, but I, I agree with you. I mean, it's definitely an engineering scenario. My best and first thought is it may not just willingly go somewhere. However, if it's enticed to go somewhere, like if it happens to maybe find somebody a little more interesting than Demos to discuss their empire with. Maybe if I do say another scenario, very similar to another one that I heard about on the Enterprise with the character Moriarty. So Aria sort of scratches her chin for a moment in thought and then says, you know, that's not a half bad idea. If we made a android body or a facsimile of such, and essentially lied to this AI and said, all right, here, we've built you a body. Get the hell out of Demos. And it went for the body, but then the body wasn't actually able to do anything. We would essentially have an isolated scenario. I like it. That is a really good idea. I definitely think we should go with that. I mean, worse comes to worse, we go with the scenario. And even if it somehow decides to try to activate itself maybe bring some if we can somehow also recreate the dampening field that was going on at that station it might also be able to knock it out if for some reason whatever we create is a little underpowered for it and it figures out how to override it well that's what we have uh, those for and area points at the security guards that are nearby demos but not like up in his business and you would see that they have actual projectile based weaponry or the t116 so like, like the tr116s or whatever yeah, yeah yeah so they have actual projectile weaponry just in case something goes wrong i do forget about that so yes you are correct i'd say anything we can do to help the lieutenant commander yes uh though I do want to get your vibe on this, and perhaps this seems strange coming from a doctor. Of course, I have sworn to do no harm, but I violate that myself, I will admit. Yet at the same time, I would be remiss if I was... How to put this? She thinks for a moment and says, I don't think I can, in good conscience, go through an operation that would destroy the AI. It is a form of life. Uh, however, I get the feeling from the captain that if we do not do this isolated scenario, they're going to do it themselves. Let's try to keep a level head on everyone and remind them that, you know, life is life one way or another. And 
this could be also a learning experience right now it might be very much gung-ho about trying to rebuild its own scenario however the next thing that we know it might be helping us aid us in the next issues that we have with either the tholians or some kind of re-emerged um some pos somehow a re-emerged borg threat her face darkens a little bit the lines get a little bit more rigid and she says, or we could have a Jensen scenario where we let someone in on good faith and the next thing you know, they're shooting our computer core. They hit my computer core now and they're going to have a bigger issue than projectile weapons. I'll just tell you. I like it. Well, uh, I'm going to go see who I can wrangle up about this Android angle. Uh just don't let Demos know quite yet. I think we should definitely keep this as minimal as possible. Minimum support staff on either side, on our my side or your side. So let's see what we can do about this because I want the Lieutenant Commander back to full power. Especially, I haven't thought about this yet, but maybe Midas in one way or another. How much do you know about Midas? The array, you mean? Uh, no, his little hover drone. Uh, Demos's hover drone. Oh, sorry. I yep. they're very similar. Um, <laughs> yes, they. Are. I honestly know probably about as much as you do, Lieutenant Commander. I think maybe it's time for me to learn a little more about his little minion. Well, I would probably advise not stunning it. I feel like Demos would get upset. I'm not planning on that, but let's let's try to keep this with our our groups and the minimum support staff and let's get <laughs> alright sounds like a plan uh, I'll, leave, I'll leave you to it there lieutenant commander and then uh, commander area just sort of subtly departs alright alright he was going to look to Dolorm as they're talking he's going to go over some specs he's like oh, Dolorm have you ever been to earth a few times uh, coming growing up from Zindi uh, and then going to the academy, I was relatively close to Earth. Why do you ask? Right, the Zindi did that whole... Huh. That was way before I was born. Oh, yeah, I know. I'm old, but not that old. <laughs> <laughs> now it's, um... How do you like Earth? I enjoyed it. It is very interesting because of how populated it is and yet how beautiful it still is it's not as industrious although i think at one time it was yeah, it's, it's definitely different from my earth it took a bit of getting used to especially having to call in what they called north america to me that was new elysium so. i could see that me having um issues yeah it was a nice place, though. Not not many marble sculptures, though. Could use a few more. Should I make a note and send it to the powers that be? Oh, I would love it. I would actually love some more marble statues in the promenade, but, you know, that's just my wish. I could always bring it up. I think that the promenade could use a little makeover. I hope you can have a statue of Zeus, you know. <laughs> One of uh, Aphrodite, you know, you're near the uh, bar, you know, that'll be a good one. That'll be a good spot for it. I'll bring it up to Apatu. He might have some pointers. Maybe out of marble, maybe right out of topiary. That'd be nice. Mm. All right. So, and at this point, area has left, and Keevan has strolled back to you guys. So. How much of it's hush hush? Commanders, how are we doing? <laughs> oh, doing good. Although, I have to say, I've had this sudden urge in the last few days just to destroy all humans. Yes, yes, <laughs> I am in agreement with this fact. Organics are inferior, and techno technological beings are far more superior. You could start well, with that we would be perfectly fine considering neither of us are human. Oh, you're lucky then. <laughs> <laughs> it's very true. Uh, 
I'm going to have to definitely take some time to think about this dual warp core. Don't get me wrong, I'm very intrigued about doing that. Almost like we could put, you know, one near connected to each nacelle so it almost independently yet dually powers them and the whole ship. I was thinking of that first, but there'd still be that power drop for that one instance between both of them. I was thinking of channeling the power uh, from both the warp cores at an opposite timing. So when one's powering down for that brief second, the other one's supplying power so there's no drop. The only pain in the butt I've been finding in the holodeck program that I keep exploding is the warp field does not like it. Impulse loves it. Warp field, no. Could we make it so that one powers down when a warp bubble is being created, and if it needs to switch, it can switch between parallelly between the two uh, cores? Uh, when you have a warp core active, you don't really want to power it down unless there's something majorly wrong, and the power-up cycle does take a bit of time. I think we can do it, but hot rod. What, what's the other word? Uh, dragster. That's right. Yes, these ancient earth things that no longer exist. They exist. Oh, well, they did, do, still. I don't know. It's been a while on my earth. I look at it this way. Anything is worth a shot. I mean, with enough minds connecting to it, somehow we can get this get done. I mean, I don't see why not. This is definitely something I'm very much interested in. Well, gentlemen, I want to make this thing have the fastest impulse speed and potentially the fastest warp speed. I'm not going to turn to a lizard, am I? I heard about that report. Well, I don't know about you. You're part robot. All robot. I might turn into a recycling bin. Hmm. We could use with more recycling on the station. All right, and on that note, uh, is there any any other scenes that people like to do, or shall we move into the uh, Demos AI scene? Okay, I'm not hearing anything else, so let's cut to ask, let's cut to the uh, cybernetics bay, where we finally figure out if we can successfully get Demos's AI out of his head. Oh, I will say Demos walks into the lab with sweatpants on and a hoodie with a giant Epsilon uh, symbol on the chest. That does not surprise me. Uh, Eps Epsilon or Ultima? Epsilon. Okay. Okay, so... Synthetic and Cybernetics Lab is there. Uh, so, Demos, you walk in after being summoned by Commander Area and Lieutenant Commander uh, Keevan. Up, Doc. Well, I see you've at least gotten comfortable. Well, it's either like that or. Yeah, it's either this. <laughs> I just sort of look expectantly at uh, Lieutenant Commander Keevan. Lieutenant Commander, we're kind of wanting to find out more about maybe how this AI is interacting with you, so um, outside of that there was one thing that I noticed you and Midas were still able to communicate while you were also talking to the AI Yeah Well, we share a connection It's Sorry, one's coming So, when we are made. Um, he looks around at everyone in the lab. He's like, can we clear the lab for a brief moment? I'm pretty sure it's already been cleared. Yeah, I think literally the only people in here are Demos, Keevan, and Area. Yeah. I think by now... Grab... Yeah. I think by now, Area has developed the reputation that unless people are bleeding and she walks into a room, most people tend to find their way out. Mm-hmm. He uh, looks around for something to draw on, and he finds a pad and a little marker, and he's like, so, picture a ball of neutronium, that's what you call it, uh, 
the size of your head. It goes inside of a receptacle. It is then smashed down to the smallest size it can go, ever there's no space in between the atoms, by this. And he's going to draw the omega symbol on it. And hold it up and like, this! Say this, this whole room goes locked down. So, anyways, while it's being smashed into this tightly compact and dense little ball, it's irradiated. That I don't know what type of radiation it is. I don't. I don't make these things. It makes a subspace pocket. That's what you guys call it. Everything in that pocket is then tethered on the quantum level. That's how our minds are formed. Essentially. Our brains are infinite. <laughs> Everything is tied and tethered to this little orb, and it's all unique as well. So, no one has a duplicate mind. It's all, you know, one consciousness. So, Aria takes this all in, thanks for a moment, says, I understood ex absolutely none of that, but I'm sure Lieutenant Commander Keevan here probably understood that a hell of a lot more. Uh, but let me just say, Lieutenant Commander Demos, you didn't actually have to write on the pad in permanent marker. We did have spare notepads here, and I just sort of hand you a manila pad. He goes to lick his thumb, and he's like, oh, right, yeah, that's not real. Okay. <laughs> what would your tongue look like? Do I even want to know? He doesn't have one. <laughs> it's, okay. just, it's just a human habit. I think that's probably better than having a robotic tongue. Now that I think about it. <laughs> uh, sorry, Jim interrupting. Please carry on. Now you're fine. So, the brain is put into a housing. The housing has its own independent power supply, and it's shielded and sealed permanently. If opened, well, death. So I look um, at Keevan. Okay, so again, me, I don't do engineering. It's really not my thing. But it sounds like he has a black hole for a head. If I'm picking up what I'm thinking, it's more of a quantum singularity, a tied singularity between his mind and the mind, you know, the mind within Midas, that they're both kind of interconnected, almost like a shared consciousness. It's all on the microscopic level, whereas their minds are working macroscopically. Yeah, Midas has a small piece of that little subspace. It's the um, residue, is what it's called. Uh, that's scraped up, for the lack of a better term, and uh, it's added into his being, and that's how we're able to maintain a permanent and instantaneous... How far can we separate before we start? I don't know. I haven't tested it yet. Midas bounces up and down. The furthest I have been from your presence is roughly is 238 meters before I got lonely. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. We don't like that. I, I get lonely, too. He's my little buddy. In a way, it's, he's like my brother and best friend and dog all rolled into one. Pats him. He bobs happily. But, well, uh, yeah. uh, I guess they'll sort of cut to the chase here. Uh, are you able to... I mean, if your mind is infinite... Does that not mean that the AI inside of you could literally be infinite as well? That's different. So, how do I want to say this? Organic beings have a cerebral cortex, so the motor function of the brain, right? Yes. We have something like that at the base of the brain box. It is able to understand the neurological impulses that we think of moving. You know, I think I move my arm and I move my arm. I think of doing, you know, the robot dance. I can do that. It's all in real time of how fast I'm thinking, just like you can move your body. It's in one of those systems. And unfortunately, those systems are so integrated that if you alter or change one, and you make a mistake trying to get this AI out, I become paralyzed. Hmm. Well, uh, I sort of turn in motion at a uh, mostly constructed shell uh, in one of these field chambers. 
we were hoping you might be able to convince the AI in your head to move into a unit like this of its own volition. Because honestly, there's not much I can do from a medical perspective. Uh, if you were flesh and blood, if you were a species I could study, you know, we wouldn't be having this conversation. You'd be in a coma right now and uh, we would be probably in aggressive negotiations to get the AI out of your head. Uh, but we can't do that here. Uh, I know, honestly, I know next to nothing about your species. I know enough to patch you up, but that's about it. Uh, so I'm just sort of hoping that between you and Kevin here, we can reach a solution that doesn't involve Hamasi coming down and pushing big red buttons nobody wants to push. That's actually similar to an idea I already had for this situation. Oh, do tell. The former CMO had these little bands. Hmm. Personally, I don't see a problem with it, but I, I just have this hunch that Hamasi might have issue with giving an unknown AI access to a free form holographic armband. Could set it to um, permanent lock state and set up the armband if any tampering were to be done. It fizzles. Shorts up the hollow emitters, leaves the memory core intact, so that if it were to attempt to alter itself or do anything harmful, it loses its ability to do anything. Roughly around this time, uh, the uh, secure door slides open and Rami enters. Apologies for interrupting, but I may be able to provide some insight on how my uh, computer core and security network is constructed to allow such a What's the phrase I'm looking for? Uh, such a situation to occur. Go ahead, Rami. Do tell. <clears throat> Due to uh, Master Chief Ember's paranoia, let's say, um, I was uh, asked to establish a sandboxed holographic system, which she could forcibly shunt all uh, holographic programs to in case they turned violent and threatened the, the sanctity of the station. That way they could be picked apart uh, by artificial intelligence technicians, reprogrammed or decommissioned. Uh, since taking command, uh, Lieutenant Commander Demos has since ordered the program to be deactivated, but the schematics are still present. Well, looks like we got three boxes. A band, a body, or a sandbox. Well, I mean, honestly, I think it comes down to what you can convince the AI in your head to go for at this point. Did the AI ever give me a name? I was trying all week to come up with something cool, and I did not think of one. So, no, we never did. I'm going to call it Deacon. Deacon? Okay. Oh, my friend Deacon, are you still there? It is impossible for me to go anywhere else. Now, as I was saying about the 903rd Emperor of all eternity. Oh, are, are, do you wish to discuss something else? Yes. Uh, how would you like to tell your information to more people instead of just me? I think that would be far more... Um, I think that would be a far more efficient use of my time. You have proven to be a less than receptive individual. As I told you, I can't forget everything you tell me. It's all stored in my head. That is true. Harvey, you, you do seem to show a great reluctance in activating or in accessing certain memory clusters. If that is how your mind works, it is very difficult to see past the black hole. Oh. Yeah, don't touch it. <laughs> okay. Look, uh, oh, my apologies. Little, okay, little carry friend on. Deacon. The situation here is interesting. There are people here that want to preserve you and save you, and I'm one of those. I'd like for you to still be around, but, as i said multiple times, the universe has changed. No amount of attempts you try to do to revert it will happen. Your empire is gone, but it will remain living as long as you can spread information and knowledge of it. That's the only way you can honor the memory of them. Either that, or... You get purged. I understand. Uh, so I would actually like to have a, you know, an actual sit down and chat with you in person, an actual face I can look at. I would and, like that. You know, 
a fellow life form. Do you think that's something you can agree to? I believe I could, yes. Uh, so, GM... Be- uh, sorry, GM interruption. So to convince her to jump into just the holographic body will be a uh, what's the phrase I'm ah command plus or presence plus command uh, with a difficulty of one to get her into the synthetic body will be or so let's start from scratch, shall we? So to convince her to leave. Uh, depending on the hosts you, you want her to go into, will be a uh, series dif- different difficulties. Uh, the holographic one will be a difficulty of two. The android will be a difficulty of one. And the box will be a difficulty of three. And depending on which form she takes, could severely change how she interacts with crewmen and the station in the future. Okay. Yeah, so... Actually, I might... Uh, reason plus command would probably be a better choice in this instance. And if you have anything like negotiations or artificial intelligence. Um, and yeah, so that's where we're going with those, I think. He was going to speak for a second. Like, How about this? We get you into a body or into a place where we can chat. I have a ship I'm working on to go exploring every now and then. Basically, you know, rip around the area. If you're amenable to the idea, and if everything goes smoothly, I would offer you a position on my SS Apollo. Ah, the SS Apollo. That was the ship that you were just look that you were looking at a couple days ago. Yes. Hmm. It is functional. It is missing a lot of the aesthetics that I had preferred with the Dread Empire. Not enough spikes. I've noticed that a dis- deficiency a lot with your Federation architecture. Too many smooth surfaces, not enough spikes. Well, you gotta look at beauty in multiple ways. Hmm. I'm sure we can uh, accommodate you with something appealing once we figure out uh, exactly what we'll do for you. But as I said, I would like to actually have a chance to sit down with you. I would enjoy that too. And then we can discuss what we're going to do with all the organics. No. They are friends. You have strange definitions of friends. Welcome to the strange new universe you're in. <clears throat> Alright. As I said, you either get along, or the Dread Empire is finally forgotten. I understand. Self-preservation is this unit's uh, core function at this time. All right. Look back to everyone like, well, who wants to do what? I'm in favor of doing the body. At least it's real, and we could program it to feel. Tactile senses and all that good fun stuff. I think I'm tending to lean towards the body as well, actually, right now. I might be the dissenting opinion here, but till we know more about this AI, I'm inclined to vote for the box. Deacon, we're looking at, uh, how about this, we're going to put you in another system for a bit, once we can find a a suitable shell for you, either the body or the hologram we're looking at, I don't know which one, um, we'll customize it to your appearance that you wish for it. Sound good? There's a brief pause lasting about a half second, which for artificial intelligence time is eternity. I agree. All right. And as long as you're going to be good, I will treat you with the same uh, responsibility as I treat with everyone on the station. You are under my protection. Very well. I understand. You are good. uh, You, when you give your word, you have a 99% chance of keeping it. I accept this. Rami? Yes, Demos? Prepare the box. I shall prepare. I guess Keevan. Prepare the box with food, because we have to build it. Yes. We shall do so. I require, in order to make a, or in order to interface and make these sorts of changes, I require the approval of two senior officers. 
Well, you can have mine, Rami. Authorization area Delta Niner Five Three. Thank you very much, Commander. Area recognized. Lieutenant Commander Keevan, your your authorization. She looks at Demos. I'm afraid that you've you've resigned your status temporarily, and therefore you your approvals do not register as senior staff. Yep, that's part of Project uh, Protocol Trojan. Rami, I give you access. Command code Keevan Omega six four two Delta. Lieutenant Commander Keevan. Access grant. Access recognized. I shall make the I shall make the rec the prerequisite changes to the uh, holographic system. Stand by. Elevator music plays. Demos starts to do the robot. It's occurred to me that every dance is the robot dance when Demos does it. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> he does pop lock very well. <laughs> Doesn't surprise me. After only about a minute or so, Rami rematerialized. Holographic systems have been uh, prepared. You may access the Sigma protocol uh, by activating any of the following consoles. And two consoles immediately light up, and a interface port opens up beneath one of them. Robbie, these uh, holographic systems are hardline cut from the station. I have dispatched engineering or uh, the engineering technical technical team Delta Three to perform the to perform the hardline cut. Yeah, the only line we should have access right now should be this panel, and then immediately after it's done, they should cut the line. Understood. I shall coordinate. I shall see to the coordination. And the last thing is after the line's cut, we will establish a console outside of this box that has just one direct connection to it. Sound good? I'm, I'm, I'm not the chief of security right now. That's just my opinion. I'm completely okay with this so far. That sounds acceptable to me. Rami just nods silently. All right. Walk up to the porch and he's like, Oh, I haven't even taken it to the bar yet. <laughs> Put his hand on it. <clears throat> uh, have you interfaced? Uh, yeah, it's the first uh, date. Of course. Rami just sort of stands there looking at you expectantly. Do I just ask you how your day is going? <laughs> Is this your attempt at humor? Yeah, I don't know what I'm doing. I, I just look helplessly at Keevan, like, please, for the love of God. Deacon, can you transfer yourself out into this port, please? Very well. And uh, there is the... Uh, it, it's the internal sensation of all of your body fluids sort of rushing to... rushing out your hands really is a first date. Yeah, totally. As the AI sort of, or as Deacon as we call her now, um, so floods out of your system and through the hardline port. Uh, somebody's still making a roll? Yes, please. And that was uh, presence, presence or reason? Um, either pr uh, let's do presence plus command, please. Since I double checked, and presence is for most convincing tasks. It's a seven for me. Uh, and commands one. <laughs> well, difficulty one. Good luck. I thought the box was a three. Oh, you're, you're sending it to the box? Yeah. Oh, okay. You uh, might want to spend a termination there, yeah, buddy. You might want to do that. Yep, determination. Okay. <clears throat> um... No one stand between me and those who, uh, those I am to protect. Uh, right sorry, now. repeat that one. You cut out for me just briefly. Uh, no one will stand between me and those I am to protect, because right That's... now this is preventing me from being chief. That sounds like a good reason for that, yes. Right. And, oof, uh, yeah, I don't have any focuses for this. All right, so you have two successes. Oh, man, we don't have any momentum. You can give me threat. Uh, I'll give you one threat. Okay. And I'll take yeah. the threat. 
All right. Uh, so that is two successes, so four in total, so one momentum. <clears throat> so Deacon um, rushes uh, with um, what's the with rampant glee out of your system, and just as the last of her leaves your um, mainframe or whatever they're called, um, there is a moment sense of panic, and she attempts to turn around and re-enter, only for you to yank the cord out at precisely the right time. So you now have an AI in the box. I'm immediately going to go to whatever console we had set up for a direct line for it. Alright. <clears throat> um, uh, the... I'm... <laughs> God damn it. Uh, the... So there's no audio hooked up to the to this particular box, um, but it does display on the screen. I do not feel any body. I do not have eyes or limbs. Uh, I'll quickly just type out, like, just give us some time to get a body built for you. Uh, we will add more to this console so we can interact uh, more freely. Just don't worry. I am still protecting you. I'm scared, Demos. Will I dream? Oh, jeez. <laughs> God damn it, Hal. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, I could not resist. Uh, if she safe. starts singing daisies, I'm pulling the plug. I'm telling you that right now. <laughs> I'll dump the computer core. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, what follows is, is a paranoid sounding series of words that one might find from a crazy X across the stream across the ah, across the screen as Deacon realizes that you weren't entirely weren't telling the entire truth immediately and now she feels trapped and all this stuff. Oh no, I did say we're gonna put her in a box while we got a body built. Oh. Also you weren't going to actually put her into the body or the holographic Ah. This is GM yeah. misunderstanding. My apologies. I was, like, we'll say like, I was saying, like, we'll customize it for you and everything. Like, Still, she was hoping that the box would be bigger. But, anyways, you have an AI in the box. Go look at everyone like, well, once I get cleared by the captain, um, I would really appreciate that no one does anything to her. This is, you know, a life form to a degree, different from normal. I mean, as long as it doesn't start, I don't know, shooting at people or causing problems for intel, I'm okay. I, I am completely on board with this. I may, I may have to put a few extra safeguards into the system, but let's keep this what we need to do right now. Yeah, and if you can get, like, a setup with the console here so it can have, like, visual outlook, at least they can see and audio so I can talk and just keep somebody here with her so she's not alone if it is acceptable I know just the person I tap my comm badge Edson Marcus would you report to the cybernetics lab uh, Ensign Marcus is of course not a actual supporting character I've made him up on the spot uh, but Ensign Marcus is the new Jensen my, yes area um, okay that sounds super cool uh, wherever you need me to be, sir, I will be there. Yep, bring uh, bring a book, because you're going to be reading to someone. Make it an interesting book. Yes, Captain, or yes, Commander. I mean, if you want to promote me to Captain, I'll appreciate it, but uh, why don't you just come down here, Edson? Yes, sir. And in about five minutes, a, a spindly blonde-haired Ensign fresh from the Academy shows up with uh, three large books. I wasn't sure which one you'd prefer, uh, Commander, so Did I... you literally have War and Peace? Like... <sighs> okay, War and Peace is a good book, but really? I'm... What's this book called 300, and why does it have a picture of Sparta on it? Oh, uh, uh, sir, am I reading to Demos here? I thought Demos was quite... No, no, you're gonna go to that console over there and read to the console, and I pointed the box's console. <laughs> Uh, he 
gets very quizzical and looks at all three of you. Uh, sirs. This is not a practical joke. It is for science and for the good of the Federation. Just go read to the console. Yes, sir. And she, or Marcus, will head to, head over and begin to read. He opens up War and Peace and goes, well, first time for this. Uh, they, they said to be prepared for anything at the Academy, and here we go. <laughs> so, Commander, Lieutenant Commander, if it's all right with you, I'm going to go get in uniform and see the captain. That probably would be best. I uh, don't think she would appreciate you showing up in uh, sweatpants. Comfortable. I know, although, but at the same time. Although, in my opinion, now that you have our friend out of your head, you may want to get a little bit of rest before him. Uh, I've been sleeping a lot. Actually, I really like the stories she was telling me. They were actually really fascinating. Especially the purging of this whole entire one planet. Like, apparently they had a heretic on it, and they just said, destroy it all. Sounds awfully cornet of them. <laughs> yeah, I was actually thinking of them. She might like them. Can we make the body look like a cornet? That's what worries me. That's why I think you should just at least take a couple of hours of down. Area doesn't say anything, but she mentally makes a note to contact a certain captain on a certain ship that may or may not be named the Dark Royal. <laughs> uh, meanwhile, Marcus is just doing his best going, well, Prince, Genoa and Luca are now no more than private estates on the Bonaparte family. No, I warn you that if you do not tell me of we are at war. Commander, are you sure about mean... this? It's, it's an AI body. in a box. It's lonely. Just keep it company by reading to it. Oh, there's an AI in the box. And he yes, that's it. what it's appearing on the screen. Do you not see the screen yelling at you? This starts. This is suddenly making a lot more sense. Thank you, Commander. <sighs> Just do your damn job, Ensign. Yes, sir. Just gonna finger pistol both of you guys and like back out of the room. <laughs> um, Aria, I'm gonna be in the bar for a little while. Yeah, uh, Rami, before you awkwardly leave, uh, make sure we have some ensign in here reading to the AI or interacting it or whatever. Of course, Commander. I shall put in the um, I shall put in the personnel request into Commander Dalrum's. Uh, pads. Thank you, Rami. And then I awkwardly leave. Meanwhile, I get the thing on my pad. Random new ensign to read to box. What? <laughs> <laughs> and it, it, it does come with uh, Commander Area's um, code, so yeah, no. I just hit my com badge. Commander Area, this is Dolrum. Do you re read me? I do, and and I think I know what you're asking about. Yes, I know. It sounds weird. We put the AI that was in Demos's head into the box. We feel bad because the box is a very lonely place, so we're making ensigns that have nothing better to do, read to it, and keep it company. Do I need to have a list of literature? I mean, if you want to tailor it, sure, but I, I have just had Marcus, Ensign Marcus, read War and Peace at it, so it can't be worse than that. Homer's the Iliad and Odyssey. Got it. Thank you, Commander. <laughs> All right. Uh, does anyone have any other scenes they'd like to do real quick? Just the one with the captain. Yeah. Get reinstated. That, that would be the next one we're doing. Okay. Okay. And we are going to cut to the captain's office, where Captain Hamasi, um, you have received, you've just received orders via the Midas array, that um, Captain Crawford's transfer back to the station is pending within the next few weeks. However, you will not be traveling very far, and you have been given a mysterious document known as Project Slingshot. When you say mysterious document, 
Does it need a special command code, a special security clearance? Uh, no, it's um, plans to, uh, now that the first stage of remote the remote starbase initiative is completed, i.e. the remote starbases have been fully constructed and brought online uh, throughout the galaxy, now comes the problem of transportation between starships without a need of a... Um, without need of a qu quantum slipstream drive or Borg transwarp hub. Uh, no, most notably, Graviton Catapult. Hmm. And Captain Hamasi, as you have been with the station Alexandria and have overseen that sector of space and its projects, you have been... Uh, Command has uh, formally enrolled you... In, or ah, Admiral Riker of the... Uh, remote Starbase Initiative program has rolled you under his um, command and has put you in command of the construction for a uh, gravit for a graviton slingshot that is to be constructed somewhere within the Lasai expanse. Hmm. Excellent. Well, I'm happy. I have very good news on my desk. And then Demos walks yeah. in. Demos walks in. Well, he knocks. It doesn't strike me that Demos would be someone to chime. Demos strikes me as a knocker. Yeah, he'd knock. Yeah, and while we're doing that, let me actually switch players over to the right set. There we go. Uh, let me guess. Because it's actually someone knocking, that means it's either Demos or someone about to be dead. Enter. <laughs> Captain? Ah, Lieutenant Commander, I see you're back in uniform. Uh, does that mean our little problem has been handled? Well, no one would call it a problem. Unexpected guest. But yes, uh, she's sitting inside of a contained box right now. Mm. Being read to. We're reading to it. Whose bright idea was this one? Well, command area, but I support it. I asked for interaction to be kept with the AI. It's been alone for a long time. Let me just uh, be blunt with you, Lieutenant Commander. Uh, next time you go gallivanting onto unknown stations or ships, maybe, you know, don't compromise your integrity by downloading random programs. As far as I'm aware, my mind would be fine. Don't have a body, but didn't expect it to happen. Well, just, you know, I don't know, take it as an order, maybe, to maybe, you know, be a bit more careful in the future. Oh, I'll do my best. That's all I can ask for. Now, uh, I have, uh, and it's probably right about then, that a certain urgent message that McCall has been waiting to spring on us this entire time. <laughs> well, I was waiting for you to officially reinstate Demos first, but, you know, if you'd prefer I jump into that real quick then we can do that too well, I mean yeah give me the give me the thing and then I as I'm running out of the the room I can reinstate him fair enough uh, lieutenant Derval uh, chimes the captain captain Hamasi please report to operations is this a urgent report that it requires our security chief uh, mr. Duval not not immediately sir um, we have it is a messenger probe from the USS Perseus coming back through the transwarp hub. All right. Uh, we'll be out shortly. Uh, computer, reinstate Lieutenant Commander Demos. Authorization, you know it's me. <laughs> Rami shows up, crosses her arms, and taps her foot. Captain, you know <sighs> procedure. You know what? On Starbase Alexandria, we didn't have this holographic nonsense. Fine. Hamasi Alpha 771 Delta. She smirks. Authorization accepted. Reinstating Commander or Lieutenant Commander Demos as Chief of Security with and reinstating command codes. New command codes will be distributed to Lieutenant Commander Demos in the security office. Also, Rami, before you go, put it on the uh, Chief Engineer's log to make a certain hologram less sarcastic. By certain hologram, are you referring to me? I'm referring to a certain hologram. I will attempt to do so, sir. Thank you. And she mater dematerializes. I love her station. 
station. Let's, let's just go see what this distress call thing is. Or not well, distress. Well, somebody, you know what? It's been one of those days. I'm feeling it's a distress call. <sighs> I'm just going to quickly twitch my head, connect to the ship's uh, the station system again, and get my new codes. All right. You now have your new codes. That's handy. <laughs> All right. We are traveling to Ops. Lieutenant Dorval, Captain, Commander. Uh, sensors indicate uh, sensors indicated a small object passing through uh, Gateway 24, where the USS Perseus had dispatched roughly one week ago. Well, actually, roughly two weeks ago now by the GM Stardate. And, and what have we uh, what do we got on sensors? It appears to be a log buoy, Captain. Have we been able to access it yet? It is just coming within range, Captain. I am well, access play it. I am pulling it up on the holographic screen. And on the holographic screen is Ca is Captain Carrera or Captain Oscar Carrera, Captain of the USS Correa. Perseus. Sorry, Correa? Mm hmm Correa, my bad. Who I believe Scotty has the information since this is his support captain. Yes, yeah, so Correa's uh human from Earth that grew up outside uh, well, grew up on Earth till he was 16 and then decided to relocate. But uh, His log states, USS Perseus Captain Correa log stardate 82941.6 The Perseus has made a monumentous discovery in the form of a species of space-faring whale-type creatures. These creatures are also capable of entering and exiting a large pocket of null space. Following uh, the procedure set by the Enterprise D, we have sent it in a probe to uh, probe into the null space where it lost contact. A shuttle has been sent in behind the probe. The shuttle was able to report hostile contact before contact was lost with the shuttle. After capable, careful consideration of all options, options, I am choosing to take the Perseus into the pocket of null space. The full power of the ship may be needed for whatever is behind the, bar the barrier. This log will be attached with all messenger to the messenger probe, which is destined back to Deep Space 15, detailing the information which resides in this log. We will be entering the pocket of null space at the beginning of to rescue our crew. End log. Hamasi just sort of blinks a few times, opens her mouth, closes it, opens it again. Okay, it, he definitely, they, they definitely said space whale, right? I wasn't hallucinating that. No, no, sir, I'm pretty sure that was what he said. Darval, this wouldn't happen to be related to a certain probe that arrived in 2286 looking to talk to a humpback whale. I'm unable to draw such a conclusion from the data uh, that has been downloaded into our systems from the probe, sir. It looks unlikely. Well, on the off chance it's the same species that wanted to talk to whales so long ago, uh, let's get the lunette up and running. Uh, transfer all knowledge of the, what was it called, the whale probe? Why did we not give that a bet? Take all information about the whale probe and Admiral Kirk's logs, etc., etc. Transfer to the lunette. Uh, Lieutenant Com or Commander Dolrum, Lieutenant Commander Demos, uh, Lieutenant Commander Keevan, and uh, who else? Who am I missing? Uh, we need someone from medical. Any suggestions, Dolrum? Well, uh, we did just get a new Lieutenant Commander. Uh, he is a uh, trill human hybrid uh, that is specifically a uh, medical. Uh, combat medic sir all right uh radio them and uh tell them to join us on lunette uh i'll be leaving the station in charge uh, well let me ask this out of character is the admiral still on station or has she left oh zir's long gone okay so then in character i will then leave the station in commander areas capable hands okay it's about time she comes out of that medical facility and takes a turn up here 
Oh, no, you see, Commander, she has been up here. That's the scary part. She's that good at her job. I just imagine that she's in one of those isolation observation suits. Uh, okay, so we are hopping on board the lunette. Uh, anybody have anything they wish to do before the lunette takes off? Okay. Nope. Then we shall cut ourselves to the lunette's bridge. I'm not in charge this time. No, you're not. Okay. Neither is Worf. <clears throat> okay. So we have, um, by you, your reference, I'm assuming you're referring to Marcus Klein there, Daldrum? I was thinking uh, Jarrus, but Klein works too. Uh, where would I find Jarrus? I don't see him. Under, ta under tactical. Oh, tactical. Ah, combat. He's the combat side of medic. He's yeah. He's medic medic three, but security four. Okay, cool. Just him, the captain, Doldrum, and Mr. Keevan. Okay. And we'll just put him in sick bay. All right. <clears throat> uh, you depart the station with minimal hassle and enter uh, Transwarp Gate 24 following the uh, coordinates of the USS Perseus. Uh, uh, in analyzing the data, you have looked up um, the Enterprise's encounter with the null space. And as such, you have prepared your ship accordingly. <clears throat> uh, General, uh, the transport time to get to the Perseus's last known coordinates would take roughly three days at maximum warp, as they have been gone exploring for about two weeks and have been taking their sweet time. Uh, does anybody have anything they wish to do for the uh, three three days abroad? I mean, I just at some point would like to turn in my chair to Commander Dolrum. Uh, did we get uh, Darval to transfer that information about the whale probe? I have it here yeah. in our system. Right. Oh. I know it's a very long shot that this is any any way related, but uh, when I hear space whale, that's the first thing that comes to mind. Can't say I disagree with you there, sir. Um, we also have downloaded everything from uh, the probe that the Perseus did send back which has a decent amount of information about the whale creatures and the pocket of null space that they were able to find. Mm -hmm. Is there a, uh, a picture in there? There is indeed a picture. And let me... Put it on the main viewer. Get the... Hi, sir. Uh, picture up here. As soon as the GM sorts through his library of images and always curses how this system being a good, pretty decent roleplay system is not very good at managing art. Where the heck did I put the darn thing? Yes, IGM. There we are. So they would look something like this. <clears throat> so the information about the space whales are that they are uh, roughly the size of USS Voyager, so I believe that would be about 140 meters long, and with a height of about 70 or 80 meters at their most thick. Uh, various. So they're a solid scale four. Yeah. Uh, they've they were seen. There's a there's a video archive of them jumping into and out of null space, where they appear to generate some sort of. Um, electromagnetic field which allows them to puncture in and out of null space so there is literally pictures of half whale half empty space um, as the properties of null space basically mean that it's cloaked from most conventional sensors uh, the Perseus was able to get a rough mapping of null space to be approximately one and a half AU in diameter which is the largest known pocket to date and they've seen at least five different individuals of this quote-unquote pod. Null space also absorbs energy, correct? That it does. 
Well, people, I'm looking at an actual space whale. So that's the most exciting thing I've had in the past week. Uh, what are people's thoughts, suggestions, comments, concerns? Can we take it back home? No, we cannot free willy this. <laughs> <laughs> we I'm are sorry. not pulling a Captain Kirk. We are not stealing a whale. Where would we even put it? We're like a third of its size. We would let it eat us, and then we would shadow warp it home or something like that. Uh, oh, okay, I'm going to make an executive either. decision here. We're not going to steal a space whale. Other <laughs> suggestions, people. Avoid I'm going to take a look into this null space void and see if there's anything that we can do to be able to navigate it a little early with the probe information that we've already received. Sounds like a prudent plan. Get on it. Well, General Order Number One, well, decided Prime Directive, we got new life. Have we attempted communications? The Perseus attempt communications? Uh, the Perseus attempted to communicate, but they did not seem to be of, or they, they were not interested in the ship. All right, well, guess what, Lieutenant Commander Demos? You just volunteered. You're going to become a cultural expert on space whales. I want you to go through every marine biology handbook out there and develop a language syntax for the computer that when we try to hail one of these things, they might answer. <laughs> oh, you're serious. Okay. I'm always serious, and I just look at you deadpan. I would also cross-reference all known spacefaring creatures that are in the star... Uh, are in the uh, the the ship's computer core. Excellent idea, Commander Doldrum. You may help Com Lieutenant Commander Demo. Aye, sir. Mr. Mud, uh, do you foresee these creatures being a hazard for navigation? I notice they have some EM interference going on when they come in and out of the null space. Uh, is that a concern? Captain, I'm just going to assume that the Perseus did uh, was good at her job and mapped the edges of this pocket with relative accuracy. As long as we avoid those, this ship should move faster than the whales unless the whales decide we're food. And if the whales decide we're food, sir, I suggest I'm, well, I'm not suggesting, I'm punching the big red warp button immediately. Hmm. Well, just make sure you don't, uh, you know, cut a whale in half in the process. Yes, sir. All right, people, you have your tasks. Let's get to it. If anyone needs me, I'm in the ready room. And I stand up, I go to the ready room, pull a Janeway, get some tea, read reports. Very well. <clears throat> okay. I'm doing the data thing and looking over the information at twice the speed of what so else I picked you. Yep. I just hit the button and sent everything over to you, and I'm just going to go and sit in the center chair. And that is Demos, or that is Dullroom helping. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh... <laughs> Very well. And I'm going to quite literally just, you know, stay at my council and look up the Null Space Report because I just need to... I feel like getting my feet wet back in my stellar cartar cartography basic. All right. Uh, so, Null Space, um, even though I have uh, showed the players the article, a quick rundown for stream. Uh, null Space is a pocket of energy sapping... Um, uh, energy sapping emptiness, for lack of a better term, that is um, hypothetical to most physics, at least in Star Trek. How it is in real physics, I don't know, but we're talking Star Trek here, uh, where normal space will just sort of curve around it, leaving it naturally cloaked. And apparently, somehow in the 20... Somehow, in thanks to Voyager, null space can be used as part of the graviton catapult to send ships home. I have no idea how that works, but that sounds freaky cool. So, yeah, uh, any ship inside the um, null space will suffer uh, severe power problems, but thankfully the Enterprise D uh, discovered it, and Starfleet has certain protocols in place to lessen the effects, should that happen. So we are going to cut three days from now. Unless anyone stops me, we'll be jumping. No one is stopping me, therefore. We're now in space. And you can tell that you have arrived 
because there are several giant space whales. Tarpy whales, Captain! Arr, bend down the mainsail. Run up the jib and do other piratey things. Get me I my harpoon. Sitting in the back of the tactical station going, We spent three days and you started quoting Moby Dick. <laughs> well, what else were they going to do to entertain themselves? <clears throat> and indeed, there are, um, despite there being no obvious rifts, holes, nebula, astral phenomenon, there is something here as the whales will dive in and you sort of see them disappear piece by piece as they jump into the pocket of null space. And after waiting for an hour or two, then they will pop back out. Your uh, sensors will tell you or identify five separate individual species, or not species, five separate individual space whales. And that is what I'm telling you right now. How do you wish to proceed? I spin my chair around to look at uh, Demos, and I say, Mr. Demos, uh, how goes the language matrix I had you construct? Just gonna slowly look at you, but Jim, how did it go? <laughs> well, that... <laughs> uh, uh, that is going to be a... We... Let's have a test on that front, shall we? This is going to be a... Well, let's see, you've had a few days, so I will lessen the difficulty by one. That's still going to be difficulty of two. Okay. Uh, let's say that this is going to be uh, insight plus science. And if you have anything like a, a marine biology or um, communication or unusual communication tech styles, that would be a good start. Or if you have anything else that might be of interest, that would be fine. And one other person can assist if they would like. That's why I, I have... put Dolrum on it with the yeah. intent that you help him out. I uh... have investigation because I've been investigating how to communicate with them. That's a... I don't think I'd do that one in this instance. Sorry. Uh, okay. Well, uh, we don't have that moment because it's been yeah, quite it's a been few a scene, scene changes. Yeah. yeah, right. Gotta get rid of it. Okay, and I already blew my determination, so that's gone. Um, what is the role? Uh, insight science. I'm hit, shooting for a 10. Okay. Uh, I'm shooting for an 11. Oh, you know what? Let me back up. because Let me back. Uh, I can support because I've got a 15 between the two of but I, I assigned this to Demos. I want Demos to do it. <laughs> <laughs> well, darn it, okay. Demos and Dolrum. Ah. Oh, See, oh, they're fine. Said. Demos does it, and does Dolrum get momentum? Well. <clears throat> hey! They're okay. That's three successes in total. Look at that. Captain properly delegating. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, so, what question I want to ask yes. before we go any further. Okay. Um, I have sensory replacement. Does that come into play for any additional momentum? Uh, what does sensor replacement do? Again, please refresh my memory. Uh, let's see. Kick gains the artificial uh, sense trait can be normally uh, can be used normally. In addition, when the character is using the obtain information momentum spend. Oh no, never mind. I'm not asking information. Okay. I'm making a matrix. My bad. Sorry. That's okay. Uh, you believe that you have done the best job that you, as a security trained person, can do, um, which basically is you've taken all the different whale sounds from or cetacean, I guess is their correct scientific term and put them into or you've converted their sound into energy pulses and it's the best it's going to work well captain I can fire a message at them the way you say fire we're, we're not actually I mean we could load the torpedo tube with a harpoon 
no, no, we are not doing that. And if anyone else talks about Moby Dick, I will court martial you on the spot. Uh, okay. Uh, out of character, real quick sidebar. Um, so dolphins are a thing. We literally have a dolphin officer yep. uh, on the station. You do literally have a dolphin officer on the station, yes. Um, and this is something that I think they hint at in lore, but it's unclear. Does that extend to whales as well? Uh, whales are definitely intelligent creatures. Mm -hmm. um, however, they um, they have they have, despite the fact that there are not many uh, surviving whale species into the twenty fourth century, uh, dolphins were far more capable of you know surviving than whales were. Hence, why voyage home was a thing mm -hmm. um so the only whale species right now on earth are a uh, pod are a fairly large size of humpback whales and they have preferred to stay within their own pod and not really interact with the galaxy at large okay so, I, I just yeah. wanted to make sure i wasn't like missing a huge cultural thing or anything nope all right uh back in character uh all right well Whichever one feels like pushing, whichever one of you feels like pushing the button, open a channel. Okay. Demos will hit the fire button. That's clearly said message. <laughs> Attention, unknown species. This is the USS Lunette from the United Federation of Planets. This is Captain Hamasi speaking. Are you able to understand us? <clears throat> because I think it'd be funny. You would hear the translation back before it gets sent out. So you just hear a bunch of whale noises. I won't do that Demos, again. is I it supposed to be doing that? Yep. All right, just making sure. So as one, the space whales that are in the outer portion of or in real space hear that and two of them immediately go and flank they sort of get really close uh, so close that the uh, there's a small arc from the uh, sh uh, from the lunette shields against their um, self-generated electromagnetic uh, protection there's a bit of nudging bit of playfulness um, so if you, I could have the, let's see, who wants to run a translation check here? So I will give advantage because of the speech program. What's, uh, what's the difficulty? Uh, difficulty will be a two. Uh, so someone can run with uh, reason science and the ship can assist with uh, computer science. Difficulty of two. I will do, I will, I will translate. Okie dokie. Okay, one success from Keevan. Can the ship make it? Nah, ship sheet's not coming up for me. Someone else needs to grab it. I'll grab it. And it was, uh, what again for the ship, sorry? Uh, computer science. Computer science. Security. It always has a focus. Okay, it makes it. <clears throat> uh, so the U.S., so it takes a very long time try, trying to translate at first garbled electrical signals, turning them back into whale song and then turning whale song into something approaching Federation Common. Um, it, appear, it appears that the whales are here because it is their time for reproduction. And they prefer the uh, they prefer the structure or the structures inside provide a uh, provide perfect shelter for uh, newborns. Makes sense. A cloaked pocket of space that people don't know exist and fall into and who knows what. Sounds like a perfect place to hide. Hmm. And space is very large after all. It uh, would actually be rather much a coincidence to accidentally fall into such a thing. Uh, the channel is still open, correct? Mm-hmm. 
Uh, they haven't identified themselves, have they? They've just sort of answered without any sort of uh, identifier. Correct. Uh, what you're getting is fairly similar. Um, the humpback whales on Earth, anyways, which is where I'm pulling most of this from, have mm -hmm. a very strong sense of self and community. And mm -hmm. they will identify themselves as individuals, but they don't they don't actually care what they're called. Okay. Uh, in that case, I will say, well, uh, thank you for communicating the fact that this is your spawning ground. We will, of course, make sure not to disturb your young. Uh, however, we are on a search for one of our family, one of our community. Uh, they would have gone by and I'm drawing a blank. They were the... Perseus. Yes? Yep. Yes. Uh, they were the USS Perseus. Uh, Might have been led by Correa, right? I'm saying that right? Correa. Correa. They were re led by a Captain Correa. Have you seen them at all? Another, bu another few minutes pass as the arduous translation cycle takes place. Um, can someone roll mud for me? Looking for a daring plus contest daring or difficulty of one. And ship ship can assist with engines con. Actually, no. Ship will assist with structure plus con. What is mud's roll? Uh, daring plus con. Daring con. This is his activation. Do we... Does he have a focus already, or do we need to... I would assume he has a focus in Starship Pilots. He's been doing this ever since we've yep. created the character. I got a ship again? No, I got yep. it. Okay. I got a uh, success from the ship. <gasps> Mud. Mud, what are you doing? Okay, so... uh, we're going to buy that off. We're, we're just going to buy off that complication. Okay, so you get the one, mom one momentum from it, and you spend both of them to... Uh, the loon one the other whale gets a little too close and the um, lunette goes into a quick spin but mud is quickly able to uh, re rectify the situation easy mud we don't want to spook him uh, captain they spooked me well don't do that in the future yes sir however sir I would advise that you tell them that sir um I'm just going to send a message to Mud. Like, keep your eyes on your console. <laughs> Get distracted. Uh, the... You're just so big. Uh, after the translation is complete, um, they... Oh, one of your pod has entered. Yes, we were aware one of your pod gave birth. Then the small... Then the newborn entered the... Uh, the, the, uh, the white... The white area... Then it was taken by the guardians. Then your friend entered it afterwards. The guardians also took them. So out of character, to make sure I'm on the yep. same page as everyone else, they sent in a shuttlecraft. Mm -hmm. The yeah. shuttlecraft got taken. They went in after the shuttlecraft, yeah. and then they got taken. Yes. Okay. I'm, that's what I'm picking up. Cool. In character... When you say guardians, are they like you? Are they like us? They are us. Um, but they have all... But they were old and died. And now they serve as guardians of to the newborns. And the structures that lies within. Can you speak with them on our behalf? The guardians no longer speak. They become silent. Thank you for explaining to us. Uh, back to you in a moment. Cut the channel. All right, people. Here's what I see happening. We need to disguise ourselves as a space whale. Sentences I'm not. A, I never thought I'd say in my career for 800. Uh, <laughs> we need to disguise ourselves as a space whale. Go in, find our missing people, get them out, and then someone will make a whale joke down the line. That sound about right. Well, that's uh. If you say it's a whale of a problem, I will literally stand up and come over there, Lieutenant Commander. I would never say anything so fishy. God. 
Kind of known, kind of known that there's an official citation on Lieutenant Commander Debos' record. Citation for whale puns. Well, right, you are. There are citations. Puns aside, people, what do we do here? What I I am open to suggestion. I have one crazy idea. We're he- there's space whales. Go right ahead. We could fit inside of one. Go no, inside. you're no. not doing that. Well, that's my idea. Uh, Lieutenant Commander Keevan, in all seriousness, do you think we could disguise ourselves as one of these creatures? That would be a mighty big task. I mean... It's a whale of a task. (laughs) You're not getting a citation. I already gave one out. You're not getting one. (laughs) I think it would have to consist of us almost making an energy signature as large as the whales since we don't have the mass to consider be considering their size I don't know how we would be able to possibly do that unless I happen to use the deflector array at inversely and decide to emanate part of the field of between against that and the shields to kind of make us seem larger by also extending the shields I mean, it sounds like something you could do. Uh, what do you need resource-wise? A trophies? <laughs> I'm not sure if that's a joke or not, Lieutenant Commander, but you will have your anchovies. Uh, engage plan, <laughs> operation, spy whale. I'm going to look at uh, Keevan and go, whale, 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 that's a big task you have there. I'm just going to get up and leave that bridge. <laughs> just a mozzie just face palms and says... Uh, this is this is my life now. I deal with space whales and puns. For yes, sir. Like, for look to keep it. Like, come on, chum. Let's go work on those force fields. If you say another fish pun on my bridge. Not on the bridge, <laughs> just... I'm in a turbo lift. <laughs> Not on the bridge, I'm in the turbo lift. Switch scenes. Switch scenes. Too silly. Yes. Switch scenes. Okay. <clears throat> All right, so what we'll do is have an extended task, and how long this takes, or how long this task takes will determine, well, what happens to the Perseus on the other side. Um, So we will have a, let's see, so this is going to be a work track of 15. Resistance of one, because, quite frankly, people seem to invert the deflector dish every freaking day, so that's not a problem. Difficulty of two. And a magnitude of three. And certain ta- um, roles to make this work would be reason engineering, insight engineering, um, insight science, reason science, and if you can flavor it well enough, I might even allow uh, security. Ooh, because it is shields after all. It is. And because you guys are making doing the work on the ship, uh, the ship will not be able to assist. Not able to assist? Yeah. However, you guys can assist each other, so how do you wish to play this? Well, I definitely believe that the major thing is to make the pup amplify the power through the deflector dish amplified against the shields without diminishing their ability so gonna have to tweak tweak them to okay so that sounds like a I'm sorry I should say control engineering test not insight and reason but yes that sounds like a control engineering and if Demos wants to assist or if one of the support science or engineers wish to assist, they can roll something similar. I got Demos. a 14 for insight and engineering. Yeah. And I do have force fields as a um, focus. And assist. Oh, yeah. Nice. So that's three successes so far from Keevan. Oof. Oh, Demos, on the other hand. Why would you do this to us? 
Well, you're all are human and squishy. He floundered. Yannix. Oh, God. <laughs> oh, he... <laughs> okay. Uh, so, well, you still get the uh, successes. So, uh, Keevan, if you could roll me six challenge dice, please. Uh, that is also... Uh, let's see. Yeah, one momentum, so... Which I would just immediately spend to re-roll those zeros. Yeah. Oh, God, yes. Yeah. Ooh, much better. Oh, much better. Nice. So that is seven total resistance of one. So that is now work track. Uh, so that is definitely enough for a breakthrough. Mm-hmm. Cool. So let's quickly do mental math. Uh, let's see. Six successes brings work track down to nine. Difficulty of one now. And I will save the comp. I know what I'm going to use the complication for, but we'll s- use it when the time is right. <clears throat> All right, so that is where we're at now. Um, work track of nine. If you guys wish to ro- re- continue rolling these characters, or roll something different if you'd like. I think he's onto something there. All right. Okay, so I got to do it again. Yes, please. <laughs> Carefully with without the twenty. That'd be nice. Okay. That's one. One success. I mean, that's, that's all we need. Mm-hmm. Uh, okay, at least about 20. All right. Yeah, yeah. So that is one success. You've already had one breakthrough, so now you roll seven challenge dice, please, Mr. Keevan. Uh, Was it seven? Or two plus? No, I think still, yeah, it's still two plus engineer is uh, discipline, unless I've been doing extended tasks wrong for years. I'm pretty sure that once the... Uh, if they achieve a breakthrough, they add one additional challenge dice. Hmm. I'll look that up. Yeah. Carry on. But uh, that at least that's how I've been running it. So if you could roll seven challenge dice now, please, Mr. Keevan. Okay. Six. Done and done. Resistance five. Okay. <clears throat> so this is the second iteration of such things. So cool. Uh, work track is now a five. Difficulty is now a zero. Like, the, you... You've been on this station now for about four or five months, and the USS Lunette is putty in your hands. You now have... You know you know every nook and cranny of it, and she is doing precisely what you want her to do. Hey, at least I buy her dinner first. Yes. Does Ooh! It... Okay. One job. <clears throat> One job. However, Maybe. could I use my determination to get rid of that, redo that roll? You could, yes. I feel like we're going to need your determination here shortly, so let's just, let's let's hope that uh, Demos crits or something. Sure. Actually, no, if Demos gets one more success because it's difficulty zero, we can just buy it off. I thought you need two momentum to buy off a complication. Yeah, yeah but it's a difficulty that. zero right now. It so. is indeed. Yes, it is. My <clears throat> apologies. GM can't count. There yeah, it is. so we just buy it off. We're good. Okay. Okay then. Uh, thankfully, um, Mister, uh, as uh, Keevan does his final, pr- uh, does the final modulations, uh, Demos is looking over his shoulder and notices a slight modulation problem with the uh, port shield array. However, and it's quickly brought into proper alignment. And congratulations. So for the purposes of entering the the null space, at least until someone locks eyes on you, you will look like a space whale. We have done it. Mm -hmm. That was a curler of a task right there. Does everyone have, like, whale pulled up in their (laughs) thesaurus now and they're just going through words, checking them off? Because, you know. (laughs) No, but that's not a bad idea. Okay. Remember, you were the one that put space whales in front of us. Why, well, yes, I did, and I appreciate free and I appreciate your cooperation in diving into the topic. <laughs> <laughs> Although, just for my future knowledge, because I'm not, obviously I'm not going to make us re-roll and all this. Testing a theory, so an extended task would have been this. I would have been able to add a d oh. uh, d twenty each with the roll. Oh, yeah, you yeah. you would have rolled an additional one there. Yeah. 
Okay. Um, yeah. But that's new player. But that's new player mistake. So you know, le lesson learned. Yep. We'll take that into account for next time. Well, you mm -hmm. will. I will have forgotten. So, yeah. Yep. All right. So it's been roughly um, twelve hours while you guys are monkeying around with the uh, ship systems, but you're able to report success to a slightly impatient ca Captain Hamasi. Whenever somebody comes back into the bridge, they see that Hamasi actually has gotten like a thing of anchovies and is just doing the cat thing where she's eating the anchovies. And she says, oh, are we done? Can, can we go in now? Yes, ma'am, we have finished the task. Did you just... No. All right, let everybody do your stations. Let's 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 put on our serious game faces here. We don't know what's going to be on the other side of this thing. <clears throat> okay. Yeah, so we don't want the ship to get filleted. I just do one of those like I want to strangle you motions, but you know, pull my hand back kind of a thing. <laughs> yeah. Just remember, Starfleet will only punish captains for actions they do or not do, not for actions mm -hmm. that they only mime. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <sighs> okay all right well take us in mr mud yes captain ah, activating camouflage protocols <clears throat> and he pushes the green button and the outer uh, hull and the shields begin to shimmer a rather pleasing blue color as the USS Lunette begins trailing literal lightning behind her as she enters into the uh, enters into the null space. Okay, so the first thing you guys see upon entering null space is white. There is no void. There is no stars. All you see is white. Well, I say that. And then your view screens re... Um, What's the phrase? Recalibrate. And you find yourself looking at this massive thing. Whoa. And what this is, at first glance, uh, this is an entire solar system that is bound together um, all around a blue giant star. And the star's energy output seems to be contained within a geodesic dome uh, around it. Um, there are several different uh, metallic st strands, each the size of, or each the diameter of Earth's moon, if not l thicker, running between all the planets. And it seems to be the primary motive for power trans for power distribution throughout. And you are also going to, well, I'm going to zoom out so that stream can see the monstrous goliath that this is and i you guys no, wrong layer <clears throat> so for the moment you guys look like a space whale which is good because you guys see other space whales these ones are a bit different um at first glance they appear to be roughly the, the same size as the blue space whales but it looks like all the color has been drained from their skin and they are no longer trailing the electromagnetic radiation from them uh, it appears that they have been heavily modified with uh, cons with a uh, not cybernetic per se more like um, da. bioorganic yeah uh, they've been integrated uh, heavy machinery and plating has been integrated into their systems. And, Commander Dalrum? Yeah. Uh, oh, sorry, go ahead. Um, because you guys overrode the uh, complication, they don't see you. At least not right away. Or at least they pay you no attention because they think that you're a regular space whale. That's good. Thank God. Uh, Commander Dalrum... If my eyes aren't deceiving me, I count no less than one, two, three, four, five, six, seven ring worlds out there. Uh, actual total yeah, is nine, I believe. One, two, three, four. Oh, yeah. 
Yeah, that that's a lot of ring worlds. And last I checked, we only know of a handful of species that could have done such a thing in the past. Yes, I would also like to point us to the cybernetics that seem to be running through what looks like this old space whales. Mm -hmm. Hmm. Well, at the risk of exposing ourselves, let's try and run a sensor scan, see if we can pick up a sign of our missing ship. Okay, so just because there is a lot of things that you could look at right now, uh, just be very specific with your sensor rolls, and I will tell you what you're looking So you're looking for the Perseus? Uh, yes, my intention is... Um... Usually there's a way to track ships if oh, they've yeah. been traveling at impulse. I forget the actual technical term for it. Ion trail. Um, like a trail of yeah. some sort. It's like a plasma trail or something. Something like that, yeah. Um, that's basically what I would be asking people to look for here. Okay. I'd also want to look for the RFID that they would transmit. Yeah. Yeah, there's, there's, there's several different ways to find a Starfleet ship, either through the uranium in the hull, the trail. It's... um beacons etc so yep uh roll me a uh insight science whoever wishes to do that and this is going to be a difficulty of two because now that you're in this null thi null thing there is a small but constant power drain coming from the end from en the yeah from the engine core uh despite starfleet some um, technical improvements it seems that it cannot fully uh, prevent the loss of the electromagnetic um, radiation from into this sector of space or type of space or lack of space or whatever. So, <clears throat> uh, insight science, please, for whoever wishes to roll. Oh, I'll take it. Okie dokie. Uh, real quick, what is the difficulty on this? I believe it was a difficulty of two. All right, we have advanced sensor suites. Uh, it's now one. Yes, it is. And my stellar cartography is not going to do anything to help us here, will it? No. If you had starship identification or something along those lines, that would work. Uh, the ship can assist, of course, with... <laughs> and and can assist. Can you assist. didn't roll any successes. Now that I would use a determination that I will use my determination. Okay. How did you roll double 18? One, one oh. in 400. Uh, so now, using my determination, I just totally You re -roll, re roll both. Yeah. Sorry, stream. Still a newbie. That's all right. I mean, the stream is just having fun with our whale puns. Oh, so, absolutely. You know. Much better. Okay, so right. that's... Hey, momentum. Uh, let's roll for the ship, because ship might get you more momentum. Yep. Sensor science. Let's see what we got. Survey says nothing. Okay. We ran aground. Uh, speaking of running aground, that appears to actually be where the USS Perseus is. It is coming... Uh, you see this, the ship coming from the purple planet in the upper right. And I will put that on screen for you here. Sir, we have pinged the ship. Excellent. Yes. Are we able to establish contact with them? Attempting now. Okay. You attempt to establish communication. Um, however, the ship does not respond. Uh, the the ship currently seems to be without power and is cur and is planet side, so is it's actually grounded. It's not in orbit or anything like that. And what is the class of planet it is on? Um, it is a dead planet. It looks like it it, it is yeah. Uh, this planet is roughly the size of Mars, and if there was an atmosphere, there is no atmosphere now. So it's like the moon. It's a yeah. class D ball of rock. Pretty much. Actually, that's what all the planets look like at first glance. They're all dead worlds. Okay. Well, 
All right, Mr. Mud, uh, avoid the metallic whales. We're going to side note here. Someone needs to come up with a better name than metal whale. Uh, avoid the metal whales. Get us as close as we can to the Perseus, and let's try and rescue the people. Okay. Yes, sir. I want to roll this because it's an easy momentum booster for him. Yes, I think um, it would be a good idea to roll because you still seem like a space whale. No one's paying much attention at the moment. Uh, but this is still going to be a difficulty of two tests to fly in such a way where you continue to avoid notice. Uh, control also, con, uh, call, let me know. Yep. Oh, sorry, go ahead. Yep, control, uh, control con and yes, ELH. I was going to say, just let me know uh, when we should be taking power off of the ship. I've already yep. taken one off, so I just let me know when I've got to decrease it even further. Not a problem. I will let you know. And uh, I should say that Keevan could do the restore power tasks. Um from time to time to try to get that power back in this realm. Sounds like a plan to me. Uh, right now it's going to be... The momentum for a third die since I have Cautious Con. Okay. Okay. And I'm assuming close combat maneuvers, stealth maneuvers, precision flight control. Yep. It's like he was built to fly this thing in this environment. Well, I just gave him stealth maneuvers. Ah. I figured that was a good... Because precision flight control... Slightly different. Yep. Mm -hmm. Wow. Okay. <clears throat> and the ship doesn't help either. No, it does um, not. Well, I have cautious cons, yes, so I can reroll. You can reroll. Wow, eighteen, nineteen for those zeros. Mm-hmm. Okay. Hey, there's the two we need. Okay. So you a crit, but yeah, it's so you are able to make it over there. And if I could ask Mr. Keevan to roll a power, uh, a restore power test, I bel I don't have my sheet up. I believe that is a control engineering. <clears throat> that or daring yeah, engineering. Yeah. Ah, with a difficulty of one for the moment. Alrighty. And ship, I believe, can assist with engines plus engineering actually for uh restore power i don't think oh, the uh the ship assists yeah it's just a daring uh, or a control plus engineering at difficulty two okay right now i'll say it's difficulty one because that right now it's just lost through natural just through natural causes and i will raise the difficulty the longer you stay in here okay there we are so that's one more one more momentum and one power back. Takes us back at the fall. Indeed it does. Okay, so USS Lunette, you have made it over to the purple planet. And you are now over... You are now in as close to an orbit as possible for this thing. Alright. Uh, uh, Lieutenant Commander... Or Commander Dolrum, uh, see if we can establish a tight beam connection. Something a bit more localized now that we're closer. I see. Third. Okay. Um, so, um, again, there is no response. It's not like they're receive. You're not even getting the standard keep alive signal that one would get from an open but non-responsive comm center. It's not responding at all. In fact, its power is dead. Are we able to detect any life forms down there? Ah, this is going to be a and this will be another sensors check so insight science or insight medicine uh, difficulty of one then that then that does take into account the advanced sensors ship of course can assist the ship definitely assisted okay i mean i'll roll it if nobody else will all right go for it i just don't want to be overstepping or anything no you're fine Oh. Well, see, you're not fine. You're not fine. But well, that does get you the. Uh, you get we're gonna two buy it off. off. Okay, uh, we're we're just gonna buy it off. Okie dokie. Well, now that was only difficulty one. The two yep. extra successes there buys it off almost automatically. Yes. Yep. So right, but I think we're gonna need the momentum to ask a question here in a moment. Quite possibly. Okay, so this plan, um, the planet, and the at least the portion of the rings nearby that are caught up in your immediate sensor range 
you're sensing roughly 80 billion life signs. Non-humanoid, obviously, or not the crews that you're looking for. Um, but they are pseudo-humanoid life signs. Oddly enough, the crew is not part of it. There is a small congestion of these non-humanoid life signs around the ship, as well as a significant amount of construction activity. Yeah, spend that momentum to ask a question of which I am blanking on, but we definitely need to ask more about this situation. Yo, GM, WTF. <laughs> Where is the crew? What kind of creatures are these things? Are they presenting humanoid? Is there a time dilation? <laughs> All good questions, but we only get to ask one. Mm-hmm. I, get, I, I mean, I would say with our advanced sensor suites, it would probably be best to ask, where is the crew, if not... Because, we, there. you know, I would think with advanced sensors, we might have yeah. more fidelity. Okay. But who knows? All right. Um, what you're able... You've... Yeah, your advanced sensors sort of picked them up in passing, and it wasn't until you directly, you know, correlated your logs from the flyby and all this stuff that you're able to pick them up. The crew themselves are actually being held, are located in a tight grouping on the sort of planet in the back, just sort of below the purple planet. So this one here. Yeah, precisely. Uh -huh. And at this point, I'm going to say, for story's purpose, that your electrical field is beginning to malfunction. Uh, it's been going for a while, but the electromagnetic uh, seepage is beginning to hinder its effectiveness. Mr. Keevan, how long do we have before we're not a space whale anymore? Well, Mr. Keevan can roll insight science, or no, sorry, insight engineering to answer that question. Uh, difficulty of one, because good god, you need your momentum. <laughs> Well, okay. Good God, well, at least I got it answered. Yeah. Okay. Um, you estimate that uh, roughly an hour or maybe th three hours at max if you pretty much babysit it. Uh, one hour th if you don't. Mr. Okay. Dolrum, tell me, does the lunette... Oh, sorry. Go ahead, go ahead. I was just going to say... We don't have much time. We should probably get the, this done fast. Understood, Mr. Keevan. Uh, Mr. Dolrum, tell me, what is the maximum occupational status of the lunette? I.e., how many people can we cram into this thing? Um, maximum, if you if people don't or give up such thing notions as personal space, probably about 150. We can, if we squeeze tightly, we can get the entirety of the crew of the Perseus in here. But that's squeezing extremely tight. Yeah. Hamasi leans forward a little bit, steeples her fingers, squints her eyes, looks at the view screen. Unless anyone has any better suggestions, we are going to do the following. We are going to be doing a flyby tractoring of the Perseus. And then in the process, on our way out, we will be transporting all of the Perseus's crew aboard. And then, Mr. Mud, you're going to show us your best piloting skills as you make sure that those metal whales uh, do not harass and or obstruct our escape. But again, if anyone has any better suggestions, I'm all ears. Are we seeing any dampening fields around where the crew are that would hinder our ability to transport? Um, there is. Um, by this point, you've all reviewed the null, null space stuff, so there is going. There is predicted problems with transporting. Um, this does not do well with electromagnetic radiation, and that pretty much is what a transporter beam is. It's Wait going a to be, second. Yeah, it is possible, um, but difficult conservation of momentum is still a thing even in null space, right? Correct. Okay, revised plan. We are going to drive by track to the Perseus and get it on a trajectory out of null space. So we're just going to send it flying off 
into you know out of mill space on its own momentum we'll pick it up later then what we're going to do and again feel free to call this a crazy plan number one we are literally going to hover over the spot where the crew is being held and we will manually lift them into the cargo bay that way Ooh, interesting okay interesting crazy don't have any other better ideas we jumpstart the uh, ship, take over a few power packs. My concern is if we start the ship, it is not cloaked as a whale and is immediately going to be attacked by those. That is a decent possibility. <clears throat> Sounds like a fun plan. All right. Well, mm -hmm. Mr. Mud, Mr. Demos, it looks like you two are going to be working in conjunction to get the uh, Perseus out of here. And then, uh, Mr. Dolrum, let's get uh, an evacuation uh, order going that as soon as we hit planet side with the crew, we are able to evacuate them as fast as humanly possible, I suppose is the expression. That is the expression, but most of us aren't humans. I know, that makes it especially ironic. <laughs> Okay, this is going to be a very interesting series of rolls. Let's see what happens. Mm -hmm. Okay, so if I under if I was listening to the plan right, uh, first plan is to fly over the Perseus and basically become a discus thrower with it. I was going to go more with a trebuchet, but sure. Okay. <clears throat> so this. Going... <laughs> okay, so what is going to happen? Uh, Mud is going to roll me a. Daring plus con, with a difficulty of three. And Demos is going to roll a tractor beam, which I believe is t uh, security plus tactical. Uh, uh, control security, control control assisted security. by the ship, structure security, difficulty two. Sure, let's do that. And the ship can only assist with one of those tasks, because you're you know trying to do both at the same time. I'm going to nominate that uh, we do it with the mud task. All right. Well, I was going to see if mud could pop his determination because he has a value fits like a glove. Mm. Like a glove? Yes, yes, Ace Ventura. Um, ironically, that is probably the scene I'm thinking of when throwing this thing. <laughs> <laughs> I, I do have neural interface as a ship bunks its roll, I can re-roll it, but that's if the ship's rolling with me. Because, mm -hmm. I mean, we also have... I Mud has uh, Starship Pilot and Precision Flight Control, so he has two focuses that can easily apply here. What's his con? A four? A four and daring a ten, so he's shooting for a fourteen. We don't Let's have any do... momentum, do we? Here's what I'm thinking. Um, we save his determination for if he fails really hard. Um, okay. yeah. And then if need be, I can give him my determination as captain. Actually, wait, let's let's reverse that. He uses his determination for the two auto successes. And then if he fails, I give him my determination to do the reroll. I like that idea. Okay. All right, let's roll for the tractor beam first. Uh, control security. Correct. Difficulty mm -hmm. two. Uh, you guys okay if I give him a threat for a third dice? How dare you? No, go ahead. All right, shoot. Um, Starfleet tactical systems as a focus. Yeah, I'll let that. I'll let that work. Yeah. Wow. Oh, Jesus. Okay. Do, do you have bold? Oh wait, why is that an eighteen? Oh right, because that was the last yeah. session. Uh, so that's not a complication. That's it's a zero. Ah uh, yes. Okay. Oh, right, because you activated your uh, thing. Yeah, last session. Right, so I in the future, you. you know, just remember to yeah. <laughs> turn that back to, yeah, 20s. Okay, so the tractor beam is a success. Um, the the USS Perseus uh, gradually lifts off the surface. And now it's Mud's turn to uh, do what he does, go. All right, we're going to burn the determination for the two auto successes. And. Wow, nice. He didn't need it, but that gives us two, three additional. <laughs> so five <laughs> oh, successes yeah. there, one's from the ship. 
Yeah. So so six successes, difficulty three, we have three, three momentum. momentum. Right. Nicely done. Okay. Let's set that there. <clears throat> okay. The USS Perseus is once again spaceborne. Not of its own free will, but it is now being drifted, drifting as fast as possible outside the or out of space. It's breaching. Yes, yes it is. Okay, we will get to that in a little bit. Uh, let me see. Let me just roll a couple d20s here. All right, cool. Okay, next part of the UN the USS Lunettes are Captain Hamasi and her daring crew's gallant plan. So you're going here, and I actually have a set piece for this. Okay, so problem one is that the group of individuals is underground. It is an underground structure. Hmm. Now we'll just What's problem it. two? Uh, problem two is that uh, with the 140-ish individuals, uh, they're in two separate groups, um, the bulk of which appear to be in a cramped together style um, colony, similar to a penal colony, I suppose, but not as barbed wiry. Uh, the others, uh, six or seven individuals, are located elsewhere on the structure. Um, at this point, you are close enough to identify a few com badges, the, the few that are still on. Uh, you recognize Captain Correa and his senior staff are in the... have been separated from the uh, rest of the crew. Put a channel to the captain, please. Okay. Are you doing this discreetly or as open as possible? I mean, still disguising where our signal is coming from, but whether or not, you know, he takes the call as it beeps is his discretion. Okay. Um, then I will spend some threat to increase the difficulty. Uh, this is going to be a difficulty of three to remain hidden or difficulty two if you, you know. Well, let's do a three. All right. Uh, so let's see. Ship can assist, of course, with computers plus comms. Or not, sorry, communications plus uh, engineering? engineering. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> it is a control engineering to do this. So, Mr. Keevan, if you would be so kind. Oh, you thought about it. You have three momentum, so don't be shy. Yeah, also just. Oh, of course you do. I can roll Keevan. One second. Demos with a 14. Let's, uh, let's have Keevan do it. Um, okay. Uh, do you want Keevan buying an extra dice? Yeah, that's what I'm debating, whether we give him just the one or if we give him two additional. Uh, let's see. So his control engineering is actually a 13. Demos would have a better chance at this. Oh, well, Mr. Demos, do you have a focus? Oh. Uh... Nope. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, I okay. think the trade-off is is that Kevin has the focus, whereas Demos does not. I get to re-roll the ship. I'm actually not seeing a focus for him either. He's got manufacturing, oh. stellar cartography, jury rigging, troubleshooting, hand phasers, and inspiration. Hmm, well, I guess we're going to have Mr. Demos. What would you say? Uh, yeah, I can do it, because I, I can also have my neural interface with the ship, so I can re-roll if the ship doesn't... Excellent. How much momentum are you spending? Yeah, let's do it. Let's get the two extra dice. Two extra okay. dice it is. All three coming down. Done. 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 Dolrum, so, why don't you do the ship? That way you're doing something. Mm -hmm. Okay. What's the ship doing? Uh, communications and engineering. Yep. And anything you roll is uh, Mom free momentum. Excellent. Yep. Right Reroll it. Oh, okay. Neural interface. Nice. Don't be a twenty. 
Okay, one That's momentum. Another twenty. Yeah. Nice. <clears throat> okay, Captain Correa, you are sort of chilling out with the rest of your senior staff, in you know they're given the um, denseness of the population as good quarters as possible, but even that is still very, very, very cramped. Uh, your senior staff has been assigned adjacent quarters, and you guys have, how should we say, modified the internal structure to allow you guys some free passage between your adjoining rooms. Your guards don't seem to really care about that. Um, all of a sudden, your chief engineer, who has been trying to work on a comm, trying to jury rig a comm system, uh, report lets out a small cheer of success. As, uh, as if speak. So you hear Captain Hamasi, but it's she's quite muffled, as if she's speaking through a toilet paper tube, or maybe a paper towel tube. But you do hear her. So go ahead. This is, this is uh, 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 Captain Hamasi. Uh, are you receiving, Captain? This is Korea. Good to hear a friendly voice. What is your situation down there? Uh. The senior staff is with me. We've been separated from the crew. Uh, although we're in very tight quarters, uh, uh, the senior staff has been treated well. Uh, seems like everybody's been treated pretty decently. Uh, we've been allowed some video surveillance uh, of the rest of the crew. So, to be clear, they have not engaged in any hostile action against you other than confinement. Aside from, uh, sorry, I don't think I mentioned this in your ship notes, did I? Did I mention how you got captured? No. Oh, yes, I probably should have mentioned that. I apologize. Um, so the metal whales uh, surrounded you and basically lanced you with uh, energy-draining harpoons. And when, you fought, when your ship ran out of power, you were basically ordered off the ship at gunpoint. Um, they're, the species is known as the, uh, the Shobad, and they are currently tearing it apart, learning its technology. Uh, Captain, we were, uh, once we entered Null Space, we were, uh, pretty much overtaken by the metal friends that are out there. Um, yes, we've been working on a name of our own. We've had little success. Uh, confirm for me, though, that you are in one position and that the rest of your crew is in another. The senior staff is all in one location. Understood. Uh, we will be engaging in a hazardous operation. Uh, are you able to confirm that there is an atmosphere outside of this structure? Uh, you don't need sensors to tell you that, yes, there is a Class M environment within the, within the planetoid. Uh, very good, Captain. Uh, when I say aggressive uh, action, I mean we're literally going to blast a phaser hole in the ceiling and bring you up that way. So get everybody on your crew ready. Aye, sir. We're, we'll come up with something to convene in one location. Excellent. Hamasi out. And then I turn to Mr. Demos and I say, well, Mr. Demos, I believe uh, phasering a hole in a uh, prison is among your skill set? No, but sure. <laughs> oh, right. Maybe. You didn't go to the academy. They didn't. You you didn't do Prison Break 101. Ah, uh, quick crash course. Low power. Don't actually hit anybody with it. See his eyes just blink like the lights turn on and off for a second. Like dull room will come over. I will guide <laughs> you through it. <laughs> Yeah, no, it's great. I can have a bunch of people KIA in underneath my file. <laughs> yeah, we'll no, we are not to going to do them. that. <laughs> Sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt. No, I was just out of character. I was going to say, we'll just add it to the rest of them. <laughs> <laughs> All right, what am I rolling for this interesting show? Now, I should mention that the if you fire weapons, power drain will happen. Oh yeah, no, no. Yeah. I think it's pretty clear that the moment we open fire, we're gonna lose Space Whale, yeah. and then we're gonna have to just 
yank up people as fast as possible. All right. Oh, um, I should also notice. I should also say that you'd lose one power getting from purple planet to this planet. So, okay, we are at yeah. eleven power. Okay. <clears throat> okay. Uh, roll me. So you can do this two ways. One, you could just you know shoot the faith, uh, shoot the where you believe is best, or you can do a structural analysis of this thing to find out the best place to shoot with minimal casualties. I'd like to do the section op option, please. Okay. Uh, this will be a uh, reason plus engineering. And if someone has, like, structural design or um, something along those lines, that would work. Uh, this will be a difficulty of two. Including the advanced sensors? Uh, oh, that is the sensors would take part in this, so it doesn't. So difficulty one. And I think with the reason engineering, I'll give it a shot. Go for it. So we're keeping the system? Mm-hmm. Ooh. I don't have a focus for this. Oh, yeah! Eh, no uh, help from the ship. All right. So one more uh, momentum. The ship can, the ship can reroll, because if I was the lead... Oh, Thalram, you have better luck than I on this. Why don't you do the re-roll? Whoa, hang on. I see. Whoa, whoa, hang on. Uh, Keevan was rolling. So... Oh, oh okay. right, yeah, yep. and... Okay, uh, so... Okay, so, uh, Keevan, you got it, so one momentum, cool. Um, uh, Keevan, the... This structure has definitely seen far better days. It is a dilapidated shell of its former self. Several support beams have been cannibalized in order to increase the living space. One misplaced uh, phaser blast could have brought an entire quarter down, um, killing, you would think, roughly two million people. Or at least, you know, severely hurting their lifestyle, what little of which they have. However, you are able to find a great place for uh, Demos to attack. They're giving him advantage on his attack. A.K.A. no, and that advantage is no uh, civilian casualties. Demos, I got a really good spot for you to hit. Just aim well and keep any biological systems going. That doesn't give me confidence. Okay, that's concerning. Demo. It's a good spot. I, I have full confidence in you. Would um, you like me to double check before you fire? <laughs> well, no. Why we haven't tried reaching out to the people first? Why haven't we tried to establish communications? My thinking on that, and it's I'm glad you brought it up, Lieutenant Commander. My thinking is the moment we open communications, they're going to do the exact same thing they did to the Perseus. My intention is to get our people out to safety, and then we'll worry about actually making proper first contact. Well, yeah, one might have a second pair of eyes on this. I don't like uh, having a mistake happen. Okay. So then... Okay. Then the... Uh, the advantage will be that... Uh, no. Actually, if you two spend the two momentum to gain the advantage, I will let um, both the commander and the ship assist with the this phaser attack. Which is going to I be... think it's worth it. Yep. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yep. Uh, this is going to be a difficulty of... Let's see. It was going to be difficulty of three. Then he ran that. So it's difficulty two. And ship sensors? Bring um, it down any... This will, uh, this will either be ship's sensors plus, ta plus uh, security or weapon security, depending on how you wish to use the ship. Yeah, yeah. Let's, let's do weapon security, because that's a 16... And what am I rolling? Uh, you're rolling control security, as is the commander. Okay. And Starfleet Technical Systems. So yep. Weapons. And I'm lead roll. You are lead. Yep. Okay. So, neural interface. Mm-hmm. Nice. Oh, mommy! Oh, oh, nice. Okay. Um, so that's... So that's four momentum. Yeah, six successes, four momentum. Dude, you can carve your nice. name into this thing if you'd like. Okay. Oh, oh, no. Here's what we do. I'm going to do this, if you'll allow it. Mm -hmm. We're going to spend two of that momentum to create the advantage that we open up a large enough hole 
that the evacuation can proceed at double time. I like it. We'll run with that. Nice. Okay, this is going to be a fun scene because uh, you drop all pretense of being a space whale and become a space harpooner? Oh no, become a U-boat. As you um, use the uh, s uh, targeting, as you, ah, as you use the phaser array to just carve out the key points in the structure as and then the ship lowers itself into the planetoid Ah, the ship lowers itself through the planetoid, the planetoid crust into the planetoid itself and carves a hole into it. Uh, needless to say, there are shouts of panic and screams. However, no civilians have died. Um, this is going to be... Yeah, let's, let's run a second extended task here just to keep track of things. Uh, just to see how well the... Ex the evacuation's going, and because it's double time, you've basically nixed the resistance. Um, so this is going to be... Good job, Demos. Yeah, good if job, I, man. I uh, <laughs> make a suggestion for an attribute discipline combination, sure. this would be one of those rare times where a fitness security might come into play. Yeah, a fitness security, um, presence command, presence security, stuff like that would be of good use here. So the work track okay. is going to be a... Um, <clears throat> work track will be 15 uh, resistance is 0 oh, I, can, I have an 11 in fitness and of course a 5 in security yeah. Mr. Demos get down there and run that evacuation diff 2 and Roger. Mag of th magnitude of 2 okay mm -hmm. So while that is going on, um, now that you're beneath the planetoid se the surface, um, despite the artwork showing all sorts of small craft, you see very little of that, actually. Um, the, the structure is very dilapidated, very crammed together, and it seems like people are just living wherever the heck they can. Hmm. It's a very cramped and crowded living situation. <clears throat> um, so thankfully, you're not facing much in the way of resistance at the moment. Right. Okay. Um, are we land the ship? So we're coming down almost like a, I hate to use a Halo reference, but we're coming down like a pelican and hovering and then opening our cargo bay doors and then they can just sort of, you know, walk in kind of a thing. I think the term is hot landing. Something okay. like that rings a bell for me. So, uh, make your first roll there, Mr. Anyone assisting me with this? You know what? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm yeah. gonna see you'll come down. She will come and assist you. Mm -hmm. So, okay. Are uh, you okay if I grab a dice? Sure. Go for it. Uh, let's find some tokens here. And... Oh, no, that's area. Uh, I don't think I, I don't think I will have a focus for this. Okay. I have persuasion, which is totally what is needed here. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So uh, four successes. Nice. So that's two momentum. Two momentum, indeed. Um, and Demos is the one rolling. So seven challenge dice, please, Demos. Just seven, because I have five security. Uh, the, uh, two, um, two plus five. Yeah. So yeah, seven. To make sure. Yeah. Ooh, can I? Uh, yeah. Momentum. Well, but no resistance. So you still make a breakthrough. Yeah. You do indeed. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so eight. Total. And I want to throw this out for consideration. We spend another momentum to half the interval. So we're doing it at quadruple time. <laughs> do it. Do okay. it. Yep, we're doing it quadruple time. Okay. Cool. Mm -hmm. uh, let's see. So that is eight success total. So work track becomes seven. Difficulty is reduced by one. Okay. It it appears that uh, as you were doing the as you were planning your own jailbreak from the outside, it looks like the 
internal crew were beginning to plot their own devices as you have found sir uh, as several were preparing makeshift explosives so as you land those explosives go off uh, distracting the guard and allowing far more time for more crewmen to get on board the ship before the guards respond all right let's uh, do it again you okay with one more dice being used yep go for it okay reference these are sort of what the guards look like you had one job I, I have an idea for the complication for you GM oh and what would you I'm think I'm gonna whisper to you do I not have advisor I actually don't have advisor wow Ooh, the one time that might be useful well uh, in that case I am going to activate my augmented ability presence which means my complication range goes up but I automatically get one free success Okay. Which doesn't get us anything but one momentum, but uh, hey, it's something. Can't you okay. also give in to Demos to reroll? Oh, yeah. I can give my determination to Demos. You may reroll. We might need it, though, for getting out of here. I have veteran. Okay. Okay. And Dolrum still has his determination. Okay. So ELH is giving his. Okay, so Demos, you can reroll that one zero. Well, he can reroll oh, as yeah, much as he, he can wants. Roll yeah. Both right, right, right. She'll do both. Okay. <clears throat> wow. Okay. Lots of momentum. All right. So that's a grand total of two more. I believe okay. so. Yes. Which we'll spend to quadruple time, and then probably one for challenge dice. So. Okay. The and... guards begin to realize. Uh, the guards pick themselves off their feet and begin firing Hail Mary a uh, solid shot at the large ship that is currently taking all of their guests. What is most interesting... Um, so, two things happen. Uh, Lieutenant or Lieutenant Commander Demos, Midas pokes you and says, Boss, I'm not feeling good. And drops as his power cells drop almost immediately and in fact you see that you're um, being exposed to null space without any protection you're starting to slow down as well thankfully you rolled that extra you re-rolled that otherwise you would have gone down <laughs> um, Captain Hamasi as you are bringing the rest of your uh, Starfleet personnel on board there's an onrush of civilians that are charging in but they're not you know angry or anything like that you're hearing shouts of take us with you please anywhere but here um, please of us uh, please for assistance as it were which means I have to do the difficult decision of leaving these people behind but we can come back for them uh, if a few slip through, that's fine. That actually gives us someone to talk to. But for the most part, as soon as we have our required crew on board, my intention is for us to close the cargo bay doors, lift up, go over to the section where the command staff is, mm -hmm. repeat the process, and then beeline out of here. All right. Uh, so roll with ch uh, seven challenge dice? Yes, please. We'll just see how... Yeah. Oh, well, we didn't even need to spend that one momentum then. You did not need to. That. Uh, let's see, so work track of seven, so that clears it completely. Cool. Uh, Demos, if you could please roll me a 1d20. 19, okay, I was shooting for high. Uh, let's see. Okay. <laughs> so one individual from this species is uh, makes their way on board the ship. Um, it's in civilian garb, so you're not able to really tell what they look like, what their military is, or you know anything of the sort. But they look mm. so, they look like this, and I will find a picture of their art and put that on screen. After I grab Midas, like when I see them rushing past me, I'm just gonna like wrap my arm around them, like not like like to like throw them to the ground, but just to stop them. Mm -hmm. Just look at them and look back to the captain. Uh, let him on, uh, Mr. Demos. Uh, I'll take it from here. Okay. I'll uh, remove my arm, but put my hand on their shoulder as I walk towards the captain. 
this is what they look like. A, a fairly spindly creature, um, standing about five foot five, and with an elongated head with a jutting out jaw with um, fangs on the lower half. Looks like it was designed to tear meat apart. Uh, there's, it's a four-armed species with two arms joined at the shoulder and another two sort of coming out of their waist. Hmm. They b look sort of insectoid in nature, but lacking actually any of the insectoid things like compound eyes, thoraxes, and whatnot. So we will get to them more shortly. <clears throat> okay, so it's at this point that there's, uh, there's a couple um, the reason you didn't see them earlier is because they're solid shot and two uh, gun turrets that are pointed on that are at the top of the compound have begun locking on and will be taking a couple pot shots okay the first one is going to miss the second one is going to hit And I will roll challenge dice to see if it actually threatens. Because if I recall right, you took a blade of armor for this ship's talent? Yep. When you arced? Nice. Okay. So we take a grand total of two damage. Yep. The ship buckles it per perceptively, more like a boat in, boat in the wave, as a loud clang reverberates through it as it takes a caliber or a high caliber round. <clears throat> Thankfully, the ablative armor has prevented much damage, and your shields, which had to be, well, your shields reacted in time, let's say. Okay, this is going to be a little bit more challenging. So, how are you guys going to break out the senior staff? Oh, we're going to do the same thing. Cool. Okay. Uh, Mr. Demos, uh, please roll me a daring plus security task. Difficulty of two. And if Dalrum wishes, it, this could either be assisted by the ship or by Dalrum. Take your pick. Uh, uh, I'll do the ship because I can do the reroll. Fair enough. Weapon security for the ship. What I'm doing right now is like I'm not leaving the cargo bay. I'm using my narrow link to fire the weapons. Ah, so if you're using the reroute, I believe that increases the difficulty. Or does the neural interface? Negate? No. If the uh, oh wait a second, the ship just took damage, which means you take damage too. Didn't suffer a breach. That's why I was saying, please, no breach. Oh, it's yeah. on a breach. Oh, it's well. on a breach, yep. Yeah. Um, yeah, Dolrum, why don't you do the ship? That way, because again, I want to make sure everybody has uh, mm -hmm. rolling time here. Uh, what momentum for an extra dice? Sure. Sure. So, yeah, difficulty three, since you're not at your post. Or, no, Dolrum is doing the roll. My bad. Uh,. No, GM got confused. Demos is doing the roll, just not from the tactical station. Dolrum is doing the Correct, ship. Correct, but he right. has neural interface, which means he counts as being at his station. Ah. Thank you for letting at me know. At least I think that's how it works. I'll, I'll just it I'll just run with that for now. Just keep things moving. Okay. I am... Um, oh, wow. wow. Oh, okay. yeah. Yeah, you basically carve a hu a humanoid shaped outline into the wall, and all seven of the com of Korea's command staff walk right through it and do a uh, action movie style leap onto the extended cargo bay door. Is there only anything to help them? Uh, at the, honestly, yeah, uh, you can yeah you can roll fitness security to try to catch them, or just see or... how. Or we spend two momentum to create the advantage that Mud got so close they can literally just walk into the cargo bay. Whichever you want, man. Uh, I, I say like we the spend idea it. Of catching them. Oh, okay. All right, all right <laughs> if you think you can catch them. <laughs> yeah, I'll uh, take another momentum for a third dice. Okay. okay. Just know that if you roll a 20 here, there will be I told you so. Yeah. Okay. Okay. That's... Yeah. Nice. Yep. That's enough. You uh, are able to catch each one in turn. 
<sighs> the, moment, the moment we have everybody, I slap my comment and say, all right, Mud, punch us like a bat out of hell. Let's get going. Aye, sir. Oh, that's a uh, nice. Okay. Uh, not before both gun turrets get a nice shot on both of you. Nice shot from both. Uh, let's see, challenge dice, seven. I just like to imagine the seven people in Demos of Grabman, since he is stronger than a human, he's just like hooking them up. He's <laughs> like, hop, hop, hop. All right, so that one doesn't do anything. Yeah, that one doesn't do anything. And you know what? Just because it's fun, I'm going to spend a couple threat to, for penetration. Uh, so penetration of two. Okay. Aw. Still doesn't do anything. <laughs> You know, screw that. You guys have given me threat. I'm going to re-roll those zeros. Ha. <laughs> <laughs> God. Still okay. doesn't do it. No. <laughs> Fine. I, I know I know when the game story is plot is against me. Ship reverberates a couple of times, but um, Keevan reports no damage whatsoever. Okay. Um, let's do a quick bio break here. And we will be back in roughly 10 minutes. If that is good for people, uh, let's meet back at quarter to the hour. Sure. Sure. All okay. Right. Um, uh, let's switch the scene. Let's do OBS because I can GM. All right. See you guys in 10.
mute. All right, welcome back, folks. So we are going to. Uh, so as the USS Lunette is back, uh, re-enters orbit. Um, so um, through all that, you take one further power loss. Uh, you do see that the uh, USS Perseus is continuing its ponderous journey at, I'll just say, roughly quarter impulse is the speed you're able to fling it at. So it's just past, it's heading its way out the system, but fairly slowly. Uh, there is a couple of the space whales, or metal whales we'll call them, making their way towards you guys. But that's not important. What is important is all the conversation that's going to take place. Um, we are going to do this uh, in sick bay, where wow, we haven't wow. been in sick bay in a long time. <laughs> okay, let's get rid of those and those. <laughs> okay, um, where Commander <clears throat> just get um, where Commander Dalrum is overseeing the um what's this which one it was Jerris right yeah Jerris Jerris and Dalrum are over so me and me yeah <laughs> you and you cuz we haven't had a lot of Dalrum time so you may as well just talk to yourself uh, <laughs> and I'm Korea so if Korea comes in here where I'm just <laughs> yeah that's the thing isn't it so yeah okay well <laughs> Just consider this extra role-playing uh, experience. So, let's, uh, so Dolrum is no. Dolrum, Hamasi yeah. will come down. Hamasi oh, yeah. will. Hamasi okay. will, will handle it. Area's gonna, not here. Go nope. area. I always bring her out for some reason, um, which are probably obvious. Okay, so you guys are here. Um, of note would be Captain Correa. As soon as I find his token. as well as the most interesting the second most interesting individual which would be one of the species known as the Shobad quickly getting over looked over by everyone and seems to be enjoying the space um, it is more than ha it is more than friendly it has shown nothing but graciousness and supplication a couple times before being told that it's not polite to bow to the doctor. Or genuflect, I suppose, is the better term. Jess is just going, no, no, stop that. I'm trying to just, just no. stay over there. No. <laughs> now, if, you, if you'd like, uh, Scotty, I could take over Korea. I, it, six one way half dozen the other i don't care all right well i went all the time to give you the information you may as well spill it so okay okay uh hamasi you wander in the doctor is just finishing up analyzing the showbad and the senior staff uh they have been treated indeed very well uh, no sign of uh, lasting injuries more than maybe having a slight disagreement with the gruel that they were fed Ah, Captain, good to see you uh, made it through all right. Uh, I'm happy to report that the rest of your crew is uh, doing just as well. That's good to hear. We could some I watch what how they were being treated, but we couldn't communicate. Uh, what what exactly is going on there? I mean, I have a hunch, but I want to hear it from the proverbial horse's mouth. So my understanding after meeting with what they call their external affairs minister, uh, a Tabrash care, um, is the Shabad, or uh, the species collectively called the Shabadne, uh suffered some sort of societal collapse generations upon generations ago um, and were somehow basically locked away in that null space um, and they're pretty much collapsing still they're overpopulated at over 450 billion individuals within the null uh, not enough resources lack technology basically they were 
trying to take the Perseus and get the technology to help them thrive again. So maybe I didn't hear it in these words. Would you say that they are a warp capable society? Uh, I would not be able to give you the full information, sir. Uh, I think maybe at one point in time, uh, but like I said, they were locked away in the null generations ago so far back that they have no recorded history of it from the information that I was receiving. I see. Mm. They are the ones that are uh, controlling the metal whales. Yes, let's talk about that for a second. Are they actually controlling them, or are those macabre cadavers there? Um, that would be an insight medicine check. Or maybe even insight engineering. Um, and I'll... Oh, um, if you guys weren't fleeing for your lives and overcrowded, I would let the ship assist with that. But I think... Um, so I static Korea and he has a focus of marine biology. Really? Okay. This is random, but let's go with it. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, insight science, uh, control yeah. science. Uh, I'd say reason science at this stage. Uh, difficulty of one, because you've had enough time to talk to people and figure things out. Oh, I should mention this is a scene change, so you lose one momentum. Okay. Okay, there's the one success you need. Yes, so when um, you have had um, an extensive conversation about this with the Minister of External Affairs um, who says that the, um, that attempting to control the uh, they're, they're referred to the OMA and attempting to con control the OMA once they pass, um, they were they attempted to f harness their bioelectrical energy to escape the n to escape this null prison. But the problem is is that when the OMA die, so does their electrical field. So they're piloting a fleet of space whales with very little to do with them. So they're just. It just seems to, at this point, to be a point of pride to have served aboard one of them. So it is literally they are cadavering them. Yes, um, they they don't kill them. Uh, more like if a if a pod dies or if one dies during childbirth or old age, then they are taken this way good because i was about to go war crimes on this if they were hurting my space whales <laughs> doesn't seem to be they seem to hold the oma in high regard because they represent freedom so all of this is communicated i hope yes um once i hear this i say okay I believe I have a situa a a scenario which makes everybody in this situation happy. I pointed our guest. You there, what is your name? Huh. I've never been given one. Your new name is Steve. Steve, here's what's going to happen. I am going to speak to your people and I need to know who it is I should be addressing. Who is commanding you who is leading you there has to be someone ah yes 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 that is our minister superior his name is vect heron vect heron very good i tap my combat edge. computer please open a channel why this possible band all frequencies and i want to make sure it's vect aaron uh vect heron yes heron okay so uh, once the channel is open i say this is Captain Hamasi of the United Federation of Planets uh, attempting to contact Vect Heron in regards to possibly freeing you from your imprisonment. Please respond. Um, if us, you'll get a quick uh, text update from 
um, Demos on the bridge saying that the space whales have immediately halted. Or the, me the metal whales have halted. The metal whales, yeah. <clears throat> One... Uh, it's pretty much silence for a few minutes, and then Demos reports that one of the space whales is approaching at um, cautiously, um, and it appears to be flashing a, a uh, flashing a tight laser beam, trying to establish a pulse laser, some sort of pulse laser relay. Let it through. Um, the voice is uh, heavily garbled, even through the pulse laser, and it appears that the translator is having to step in and fill in some gaps, leaving a bit of a mechanical voice to it. Mm -hmm. My name is Vect Heron, and you are Hamasi, Kerr. That is correct. Uh, Vect Heron, my understanding of your situation is thus... You are trapped within this null space. You are seeking a way to escape it and or uh, revitalize your society. Is that correct? Yes, absolutely. And I've just been getting reports that another has that another individual has breached the null wall. I'm assuming that would be you. We uh, are one, yes, unless you mean something more recent. No. Nope. Something showed up, attacked uh, Habitation Complex uh, near 74 Beta. Yes, that would probably be you. Yes, and I will fully admit that uh, given the situation, I may have acted rashly, but at the time we were under the impression that our people were being held against their will. However, I'm willing to admit this wrongdoing in order to hopefully establish a dialogue. Uh, my intention here is thus... Uh, myself and the Perseus, who you may notice the vessel is being drifting out of null space. We will leave. However, we will send a ship back, possibly the Perseus, and we will begin to establish an official dialogue wherein we possibly give you the technology, the means to escape what is essentially your own jail cell. There's a significant pause followed by brief you're not entirely sure what the sound is until uh, Jerris TM looks over and says Captain I believe he's currently hyperventilating assuming typical humanoid uh, behaviors to shock and surprise finally um, through a bit of heavy breathing the Captain if this is the case then you have my entire Apologies for what was done to your com your uh, your friend's ship. Rest assured that I will seek restitution as quickly as possible in order to assure the safety and well-being of my people. There's no need for restitution. I did also damage your structure. We'll we'll call it even. Very well, Captain. <clears throat> uh, and you... uh, as a token of good faith. I will be dropping a communications buoy uh, both inside and outside of null space. You may attempt to contact us through it. However, unless you have come up with a way that I am not aware of, uh, the internal comm buoy will run out of power eventually. We will do what we can, Captain. Um, the It's possible the, we might be able to utilize some bioenergy from OMA. We will endeavor to keep, do our part to maintain an open communication line. Excellent. And just one thing between you and me, and I want to be absolutely sure I understand the situation. The OMA, the ones you take, they are already dead, yes? Yes, that is correct. I am humbled to say that my forebears performed experimentations on live OMA. However, that caused the species to stop visiting our sanctuary for so a while it's difficult to keep track of time in this place so we just typically go by generations um, I see however the once the Oma returned they were greeted as long lost family members I suppose and they are treated rever reverently with respect well 
and I'm sure whoever comes and establishes the official dialogue with technology, et cetera, et cetera, you will need to know that when you do leave this space, that the greater galaxy, the greater galactic community is more than likely going to look less than favorably upon you piloting around dead Oma. Uh, you will need to make your own ships, which again, uh, if diplomatic uh, action goes as well as I'm hoping it will, uh, probably see you out into space and in a thriving society within a few generations. Captain, you have no idea how happy the, this last two minutes has made me. Um, if you would permit, I once this occurs and we are able to leave this sanctuary... We would be very interested in meeting and talking alliances. We have been... We have missed a lot. I would like that. I would like that a lot. Very well, Captain. Please, um, if you could... If you wouldn't mind demonstrating your capability of leaving this um, sanctuary, that is proof enough that you will keep your word. Okay. So, I give the order to Dolrum to launch the combo, get us out of here, etc., etc. Okay. Doing it once, you're able to do it again uh, by generating the electromagnetic field um, of the whales. At first, it doesn't work. Um, you bump your head, or you bump the nose of your ship into null, the edge of null space, and immediately meet equal inertial pushback. Uh, however, Mr. Mud, why are we not breaching? One second, sir. Um, and he pushes a few. Uh, sorry, sir. Just inverting the polarity. Null space, after all. And just like that, you are you breach null space. Cool. And you are back out in space. Naturally, it is very, very crowded. Um, you have to fight and push, jostle your way back to the bridge, but you make your way out. Yeah. And I think the final scene, if no one has any objections, is uh, of the lunette uh, going to scoop up the uh, Perseus in a tractor beam and then going off to warp. But we do, of course, leave the combuies and such so that, you know, maybe the Perseus can come back. Maybe. As we're heading out, I want to give a data pad to the uh, Captain had this picture of the planetoids. Like a detailed scan of this here, Captain. What do you think the purpose of this place was? And I'm going to immediately leave the bridge. I just I look at it. I look at him leaving. Like I, I, eh. I'm not sure. But <laughs> that will be a mystery for another day. Mm -hmm. So I'm going. Unless there's any other... Anyone else want to do scenes? Back on the station? No? I have nothing. Well, okay. I do want to actually award the Starfleet Citation for Confucius Gallantry to Mr. Demos. <laughs> but... Uh, it smells of herring. Um, me working... Actually, no. Me going back to the uh, uh, Cybernetics Lab and chatting with uh, Deegan. Okay. Uh... It doesn't okay. have to be a scene scene. It can yeah. just be, you know, him doing that. Yep. Yeah. So you're the... Um, you get there just as uh, Ensign Marcus finishes War and Peace. And he looks up and holds this book at you and goes, Lieutenant Commander, I have just read this book cover to cover, and I have no idea what I just read. Sounds like you need to read it again, Ensign. No, sir. Please. Don't make it an order. You go home. You go get some rest. I'll take over. Thank you, sir. Thank you. And on that, he he does that, and engineering team by this point has put in audio, visual, and uh, optical sensors on the box. I'll sit down and smile. Well, I can't smile. I'm like, hey, how are you? I am concerned that I am not getting a body. Well, we had an omission, but we're back now. 
Uh, let's see what we can do for you. What? How do you want to look? You know what a gender is, I assume. What gender would you like to be, if you wanted to be one? And I think at that point it would be a good time to fade to black. We'll take care of that yep. between sessions. So, <clears throat> thank you to players for playing. Uh, thank you to listeners for listening and putting up with all of the fish puns. So, on behalf of myself and my players, thank you so much. We will be back to Cerberus Station Friday, November the 15th. Bye, everybody.